Hello folks and welcome to my website. I hope you're all doing very well. I just wanted to offer this free presentation to you guys to give you some more insight as to you know what is going on on the planet at the moment given the so-called corona um, period that we're in, which is otherwise just Latin for crown. And that, you know, it's so important to claim back our crown because when we're born, it's been taken away from us, which is otherwise linked to our sovereignty. And so I'm, I'm assuming and presuming that you guys, you know, if you have landed on my website, you should be in the knowledge, as it were, by this point that, you know, our governments have done all these these tricks where they've, you know, basically subjugated us as debtors and trustees as part of this this kind of registration at birth, um, our birth and into the maritime amity jurisdiction where they've dragged us underwater, as it were. And so we're now treated as like a, a legal dead fiction, um, which is otherwise known as an ens legis or commonly referred to as your straw man. So this presentation will just help to offer some, you know, decoding as it were as to what's going on and why it's so important to come out of their legal world of the dead, claim your life and learn all that's necessary in order to govern all of your affairs as a sovereign entity, which is your God-given right, basically. Um, you know, you're born free until you give it away. And all, all of our power has been given away under these, these fraudulent, deceitful contracts and registrations, which is the sole purpose of the government, which is otherwise linked to the Shatani or Shilton, um, or Sultans, which is the kingship, the governmentship, the citizenship, and all these stem back actually to um, alien intervention, which I will um, go through some of Pierce Back's research in this brief presentation. Um, and I will leave a link down below um, of the full version, which I did a recording of, which is around five hours. Obviously, I won't take up much of your time. Um, we'll just skim over some of the most important parts and then take you over into the website and show you an inside look as to what the course has to offer um, where we can go through all the modules um, so you can make a well-informed decision and hopefully get you to take that step into um, your own sovereignty and claiming back your crown, which is very, very liberating. And I've gone through this process, um, which is like a birthing process um, where there's a lot of labor pains that I've gone through, trials and tribulations as it were. Uh, but when you come out the other side of it, um, which obviously this course can streamline for you and iron out all the creases and uncertainty so you can get from A to Z, from you know incompetent debt slave to you know fully competent sovereign um, in as little as like maybe maybe two or three months of of hard study um, and it's all you know leading you from start to finish um, so you've got direction um, and a clear bar path set out for you uh, which are gonna, which, is, which is going to afford you all the tools necessary in order to claim back that really important corona which is Otherwise, what the people in power at the moment are uh, inverting, and such is the work of the shaitani or the Satan kind of consciousness, is to be the opposers, you know, and always to always invert and twist what is otherwise happening organically or what is the truth, you know, because they're liars and the whole system's built on sand. And what's happening right now is um, so very important for humanity because we're seeing a huge awakening happening. Um, but on the flip side of that, the opposing forces are trying very hard and desperate to, you know, keep many people dumbed down as possible um, because, you know, it's this this whole uh, dialectic, isn't it, between good and evil um, that we seem to be stuck right in the middle of. Uh, but there's there's a lot of great information here that I'm going to share with you, which will hope, hopefully enlighten you and give you a greater perspective as to what's going on. So with that being said, without further ado, let's dive straight into it. So we all know what's going on, obviously, coronavirus, the crown virus. Corona is Latin for crown, the return of Christ consciousness and your sovereignty. Now, I just want to show you guys, give it a greater perspective again, that the great sign in heaven um, appeared in September 23rd, 2017, marking the start of the seven years of great tribulation. And the way this was decoded was that obviously everything in, in scripture is otherwise allegory um, for the stars and also for us as a miniature version um, of the so-called stars above, as above, so below. Um, these processes and what Jesus was telling us, you know, was otherwise a beautiful allegory telling us the journey of the sun around the stars and the constellations and also um, the journey that each and every one of us has um, and how we're just a measure of the universe and that the stars are also in us with the constellations and the zodiac, which I'll go through. So September 23rd, obviously the great tribulation said, you know, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain and she was about to give birth. Now, 
the woman in the scripture that they're referring to is always Virgo, which is the only woman in the zodiac. Um, you can see here that at this current date, that there was obviously the nine stars of Leo, and then you had the three luminaries of Venus, Mars, and Mercury above her head, forming the, the so called crown of 12 stars. And then you had the sun in Virgo, and then you had um, Jupiter was the, the child about to be given birth um, in her womb, which was quite interesting for 42 weeks, around nine months, 10 months, which mimicked gestation. Jupiter was in retrograde. If you can see here, it's kind of like um, mapped out slightly. Um, so actually mimicked gestation. So the next day on the 24th, it exited the womb and carried on its um, orbit uh, along its ecliptic. Um, so that's very, very salient. And then if you go on all this, um, the solar models where you can go back and actually check these constellations throughout history, I don't think this has happened for you know millions of years. Um, so it's a very unique um, sign in the heavens, as it were, which obviously marked this line in the sand um, in order to give us the start of this great tribulation. Obviously, you had the moon at our feet at that given time, which is depicted here. So, just to briefly, you know, because we all know we're going through a shift. I certainly have gone through a shift myself. And around the time of this so called great sun in heaven, I actually had my own crown chakra awakening um, at 28 years old when Saturn returned. And this has come into the realization of everything is energy. And this obviously then opened up the door for me exploring more of my spiritual self, my true self, rather than the egotistical, um, satanic, state programmed um, ego, you know, um, in order to perpetuate this ignorance and serve in the elite. Um, so this was a very wonderful birthing, as it were, for me at the time, into all these things that were otherwise labeled occult and esoteric, but otherwise lead us to the truth of who we are and what we're here to do. And, you know, inevitably where we're all going to head towards is, you know, reclaiming our crown. Um, so I thought that was quite, a, a, you know, an interesting and salient tie in with everything that's going on with the Corona crown. And it would just add on itself and build on itself as we go through this. So, you know, the Bible is full of parables and allegories, one of which is Jesus playing the role of the son, son of God, the light of the world. People should know this by now. We also have a literal man that did come around, you know, 2000, BC, 2000 years ago. Um, who taught of the Christ principles. Now, Christ is otherwise a title given for the Son, the Son consciousness, and Jesus was the man, Jesus of Nazareth, was the man who bore these or carried these Christ principles and taught this to the people, peoples around the time. And there's been many seers, sages, and ascended masters who have come here to remind humanity that, you know, you're the, one, you're the ones that you've been waiting for. Guys, the kingdom of heaven is within you. So just, just to re-emphasize you know, that the Bible is referring to the actual sun in scripture, which is the son of God, S-U-N, S-O-N, same thing. Um, and also to us being the son of God or the son of man, and also to, um, you know, Jesus, a man who was actually around at that time, telling people, of, you know, you guys are very spiritual, you know, you're otherwise, you know, um, a spiritual person having an experience in a physical body. And so this this has otherwise been the work of the Shatani to take people away from their spiritual selves, their true selves, and so they can be more easily manipulated and, and rob them of their crown, which is, you know, otherwise their Christ, the title, um, Corona. So John 9, 5, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. John 8, 12, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Mark 13, 26, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. John 19, 5, so Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. We always see Jesus or any solar deity, for that matter, uh, depicted with the, the halo, the crown behind its head, signifying you know, the, the link to the sun, the sun disk. And obviously there's, there's heaps of images and you see it all in the churches um, all around the world. And obviously, you know, Christians go to church on a Sunday, etc., and so we have Jesus, the Son, Son of God, the Son personified, solar deity, Christ equals Son consciousness. The Son is the light of the world. The Son cometh on clouds and every eye shall see him. The Son rising in the morning is the saviour of mankind. The Son wears a corona, crown of thorns or halo. The Son walks on water when rising, setting on the seas. The Son's followers, helpers or disciples are the 12 months and the 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 disciples. The Son at 12 noon is in the house or temple of the Most High. Thus, he begins his father's work at age 30. The sun is hung on a cross or crucified on the equinoxes where it passes over the equator, which is the star in the east or, or the east star, commonly referred to as Easter. 
And just here briefly, if you see, this is a map of the Zodiac, which has where the planets domicile, detriment, etc., and exalt. And you can see here that 6 a.m. is otherwise would be depicted here on the on the left-hand side of the chart. You can also put 12 p.m. here, which is otherwise referring to um, 12 noon, which is when he begins his father's work. And then obviously 6 p.m. here when the sun sets into Libra. And this is, you know, Horus and Set. Um, and then you've got obviously midnight and then back around to the beginning of the day. So this can also outline the day as well as the yearly cycle of the sun and the energies and the angles that it bestows onto matter, which is the physical external world that calls the world of effects, um, where these luminaries and these constellations and energies are otherwise the, the causal realm, uh, which can explain a lot of what we see going on on the planet at the moment, especially with what's about to happen. So Jesus is personification of the sun in the age of Pisces, which lasts for 2,160 years due to process processional slippage, um, which you guys should all be familiar with. The sun, all the constellations behind the sun, if you were to measure it at a given time, which is normally around 21st of March, which is the spring equinox, the constellations behind the sun at that point, if you were to measure it every year, regresses by one degree every 72 years, which gives us for it to travel 30 degrees across a constellation outlined in the tropical astrology charts, it will take 2,160 years in order to transit through a whole age, which is the age of Pisces. We're now entering into the age of Aquarius, which is why we're seeing what's going on today um, and why there's so much inversion by the dark forces. So J, J sus in French is otherwise J, which equals I or I, the all seeing I, I of Horus, the sun, the star. Sus is actually fish in Latin, which is quite interesting. Pisces is the two fish. So sus is similar to sui in French as well, hence Jesus can be just sui or I am. Christ is derived from the Greek word meaning Christos, which is anointed or sovereign or Messiah. So the sun or Jesus is now entering the sign of Aquarius. And so we saw... When the sun was in, the, in Pisces over the last 2,160 years, that basically marked the influences from that constellation, the psychosomatic influences coming from these, these subtle energies um, that influences the subconscious and unconscious minds, the collective here on planet Earth, which brought about this, this cheeses uh, personification, this cheeses like character of the two fish, which is belief and doubt and, you know... Um, everything that's attributed to that under, under astrology, which is quite interesting. And so what's going on at the moment? I mean, if you guys want to learn more about this, this kind of holy science, which otherwise referred to as syncretism or astrotheology, um, which during the Renaissance era under Giordano, Giordano Bruno, Leonardo da Vinci, and all these wonderful um, kind of whistleblowers at the time um, were actually teaching the Prisca Theologia, showing that all of this spiritual science is actually giving us clues as to the whole fabric of how things are created and who we truly are. It's like the science of the soul and the stars. And so obviously this is what triggered the, the Inquisition. Um, and people like Giannola Bruno got excommunicated by the Catholic Church and ended up you know, becoming a martyr and killed um, because he was, he was leaking the truth. Um, so he was like one of the first whistleblowers of, of the times, which is quite interesting, uh, which obviously they tried, the church tried very hard to snuff out uh, but it, it spreads and you know they've been trying very very hard ever since then over the last 350 years to try and suppress this truth none more so than today given the energies that are coming in which is obviously under Aquarius which is the next sign so Matthew 24 30 says then will appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and it always says in the bible also look for the second coming of Christ, look for the sign of the man in the heavens. Well, the only man in the zodiac is Aquarius, and he's the water bearer. Every other, there's only Virgo, and then you've got the Geminis, the two twins. Every, every other constellation is otherwise an animal. And so this is quite obvious what they're referring to in scripture. This is the sun now entering into Aquarius and taking on the characteristics of that given constellation, which is governing a lot of aspects of sovereignty, freedom, truth, knowledge, innovation, and individuality, which is what we're seeing happening today, which is you know, why these courses are springing up and why I'm donning and actually enacting this, this kind of um, characteristic 
of this age that is coming in. So, you know, aqua air is quite interesting is the waters from Pisces mixed in with the air, fixed air of Aquarius, uh, waters of life, the spiritual waters in order to wake man, men and women up. Um, the man in the heaven, second coming of Christ consciousness governs I know. So knowledge, truth, everything we're seeing. A new covenant testament is about to be written like we had with Moses was otherwise the son in the age of Aries. The Ten Commandments prior to that, I think under Serapis in Egypt was the son in Taurus, the bull. And then obviously Pisces was Jesus, Jesus, uh, which is the fish. Um, he was the fisher of men, don't forget. And then we have obviously here, we're about to have a new so-called returning of a deity, a solar deity, which is going to bring, um, you know, all the, the next testament, as it were, for what is required under this new covenant over the next 2160 years, or at least the next thousand years. So this is the corona period or crown and age, giving birth to the next ascending arc of the golden age evolution for humanity. The baby's crown is always shown first. Obviously, when we're born, the baby's crown is shown first. So there's, there's so much symbology and polyglottal symbolism tying into crown, our corona, the coronavirus that is being released on mankind at the moment, which is otherwise inverting, the corona, which is seen from the sun, in order to give us this, this new period and influx of energies to awaken the masses, um, which is linked to the resurrection. Um, it's not literally raising people from the dead. The dead is otherwise uh, an allegory or metaphor for people's state of consciousness, awareness of themselves and who they truly are. So, yeah, the dark forces invert and mock this event, and their goal is to turn everyone into automatons, which is linked to the false harvest and ascension event. So pay attention. So... Jesus is the sun, son of God now into an Aquarius. The sun helps create the planets and elements in our solar system and plays a crucial role in creating our holographic reality. The sun is the physical manifestation of the fire of God which programs matter. Our DNA receives these codes, programming from the light in order to help decode our reality, perception and experience. The sun is a loving and intelligent creator without which no life will be able to exist on earth. The sun will now be radiating light codes that are characteristics of Aquarius which equals knowledge, technology, innovation, sovereignty, freedom. But on the flip side, will activate the powers of the Saturn, Satan, aromatic forces, which can lead to tyranny, suppression, oppression, if left unchecked. This is why there will be a fork in the road for humanity as the timeline split and everyone is assorted accordingly based on their soul evolution and claim for sovereignty as a child of the Most High Creator God or still a ward of the state who has not found their innate God-given powers within themselves and have laid claim to that. Evil can only thrive if you let it. And what's interesting, just going back here quickly, it said in the Bible that Satan will be cast out for a thousand years and there'll be a thousand years of peace. Well, in astrology, the first thousand years of Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. Uranus is otherwise Greek for heaven, and that's the seventh sphere from the sun, so it's linked to the seventh heaven. And then for the remaining thousand years, Satan, or Saturn, which is otherwise Satan, and the energies attributed to that satanic force is emanating from Saturn, is meant to come back. And so that's very interesting. It's referring to the astrological perspective of Uranus ruling the first thousand years of Pisces, which is heaven, which is otherwise linked to sovereignty, innovation, technology, and just look around you, what's been given rise in the last couple of couple of centuries with this industrial revolution, all this technology boom, rightfully, wrongfully, um, you know, this is this is the influence that it's had through us, us humans, because we are the measure of the universe, um, which is very, very interesting and you know, worth worth considering. So the Pope's resignation and the end of the Piscean age just give more emphasis as to, you know, this this new birth and as it were that humanity is experiencing. Proof, this is taken from Santos Bonacci's website called universaltruthschool.com. Proof of the end of the Piscean age given in Pope Ratzinger's resignation letter in a farewell lightning bolt from Jupiter to announce his departure. Jupiter was otherwise domicile in Pisces. So Jupiter is the ruler of Pisces, um, which is why we have Jesus, Jupiter Zeus, Jesus, it's all tying in, it's all very, you know, you can link these things up and see, and it's self-evident. So in a fascinating lecture given by Santos during his syncretism show on Sunday, March 1st, Santos informed listeners that the transition is the age of Aquarius kicked off on February 4th, 1962, when all seven of visible planets in our solar system moved into the constellation of Aquarius. The subsequent 50-year period was the transitory cusp between the end of Pisces and the beginning of Aquarius, which officially began on December 21st, 2012. The completion of this great transition of ages was confirmed for those with eyes to see when Pope Benedict the 16th stunned the world with his resignation on February 12th, 2013. Link here. And so we'll just play this quickly so you can see this in action. 
handover of the covenants. A sign from God. Just hours after the Pope announced his surprise resignation, the heavens over Rome opened and the top of St Peter's Basilica was struck by lightning. As the sky was lit up by the huge bolt, it led to speculation as to whether Benedict XVI's boss was less than happy with the news. So there we have it. We can see, obviously, there was a line in the sand in the Mayan calendar of the 2012, December 21st, which everyone was kind of, you know, jumping on the doomsday boat, which is, you know, again, just another programme by the Disciparati to mislead people with the importance of these astrological handovers, given the, the cycle of the planets and the stars. And so all that, all that was demarking or demarcating was the clear line in the sand where the handover from the sun entering the sign of Aquarius actually took place, even though the energies of Aquarius were coming in because it's kind of transitory and it's kind of like, you know, you always get a blend of the forces around the, the cusp, as it were, before the crossover. And so this is why we saw the Renaissance era rise up with all the truth that was coming out then and over the last couple of centuries. But the clear line in the sand, they're saying, was otherwise what the minds predicted in 2012, which is why a lot of people have been waking up and being activated ever since then in the last kind of 10 or 12 years, like myself, coming into these new energies where our DNA and everything about ourselves is actually being upgraded due to the new energies, impulses that are coming in from the sun, which is linked to the Yugas, which Pisces is linked to the Iron Age, which is the, the lowest possible kind of conscious ebb and flow of our planetary evolution with the sun's journey um, around another binary star system, it's believed. I think it's either Sirius or Aceylon and all these cosmic forces that we come into as a result of this kind of um, tidal yin and yang or you know ebb and flow of being closer and further away from these energies. And just like a synapse, if you can imagine if it's further away, well, it's gonna be harder to fire up and connect and communicate with one another. So as things get closer and you bridge the gap, just like our sun is coming towards you know higher energies, we also are going to don that as above, so below, uh, a kind of carbon copy version, as it were, which is why we're seeing, you know, everything going on today with the truth, sovereignty, and again, the opposes, the people, the government, the people who run and control the governments and these elite cabal families are trying so desperately hard to try and snuff out these ascension energies that are coming in. Um, so we'll go through this. So I'll skip over this, but this otherwise shows that as below, internal ascension that happens and what they've been doing to, in order to externalize these rituals which take us away from our spiritual soul development. Um, so when you externalize something, this also, and partake in the ritual, this also kind of gives you your consent away for them to harvest your energy. And so all these hidden contracts where we unwittingly give our consent away to, and our power and our crown away to these dark forces are pretty much everywhere. It's strife. And so it's very important to, you know, come into the knowledge of these things. But a good book to read is otherwise called Word Magic by Pao Chang. He goes over this. Um, but if, like I said, if you want to watch the full um, presentation, I'll leave a link below, which will go over this internal um, so-called dissecting of the astrobiological aspect of the ascension that we can all achieve within. Because like I said, we're the ones that have been waiting for. And the kingdom of God is not in any temple or church that you see outside of yourself. It's actually within. And so this, this otherwise depicts it beautifully with these slides. I mean, you can pause it and read through it. I will just quickly go through it, but I, I had unlocked an experience of a Kundalini rising on Christmas Eve, which seems to be a window in time, which is where the whole Santa Claus myth actually derives from, that there is an astrological window in time around these given um, dates that open up opportunities for one to return the Christ fluid, as it were, the cerebral spinal fluids back up to Golgotha, which is the place in the skull, which is where the pineal gland is, um, you know, where, which is basically the seat of your soul in order to have some kind of, you know, mystical ascension experience, which I, which I did. I got propelled into another dimension. I saw the tree of life and I was showered with all kinds of wonderful energies um, and neurogenesis and all this that goes on. So interesting thing that's happening as well. Obviously, you know, right in December 26, 2019, we had, again, this corona solar eclipse. And we also had another one in June of 2020. Also linked in with the 
Jupiter Saturn alignment, which doesn't happen, it happens like every 750 years or so, which happened, I think, in 2020, December 2020, with, with the Great Conjunction, which is normally linked with the return of Messiah. So you can see all these things are otherwise lining up and ticking all the boxes to show that there is some kind of, you know, mystical, magical event taking place on planet Earth, which has otherwise been inverted big time by the dark forces. And this again is always tied into the corona, the corona you see around the sun, you know, and that's what they're referring to, the crown of thorns. And what's even more, and this, it, it just becomes self-evident. There's, there's more and more proof in order to show someone that this is exactly what's being ritualized on the external level as to what's happening above in the heavens with the sun and all these planets and the energies they're bestowing on humanity. So we had, you know, in 2019, April 15th, the week before Easter, we had the Notre Dame fire. And this was obviously, again, ritualizing the birth of the sun coming into Aquarius and the, the whole crowning moment for humanity with, you know, the crown of thorns being the artifact that was housed in Notre Dame. Out of all the churches and all the places where the, the so-called official crown of thorns could have been kept, it had to be kept there, didn't it, in Notre Dame when the fire burnt. And this was obviously miraculously saved, which was, you know, talked about in there. Um, news feeds which you can see here crown of thorns these ancient treasures were saved from the notre dame inferno um and during that time i actually i came into a lot of mystical experiences because i was going through some um transformations as it were through entheogens and you know delving into the deeper esoteric side of things um the occult and i, I actually had a again a lot of synchronicities and messages come into me about fire um open up pandora's box and the beginning of this so-called um, unsealing, as it were, the opening of the seals um, in order to release the, the crowning moment for humanity, and which is all tying into, again, like I said, this great tribulation that we're in. There's no denying the signs that we see in heaven if you, if you, you know, have eyes to see and ears to hear. So, you know, again, once coronavirus touched our shores in, you know, the end of 2019 in China, and then obviously in the Western world it was 2020, you can see the build-up of all these things and what's going on with the great sun in heaven. And then we're having, you know, the Notre Dame fire. Then we've got all these solar eclipses. We have the great conjunction. We then have, obviously, you know, Event 201, which they announced to the world two months prior to the end of the year of this thing being released. And because obviously they've got a predictive program, everything that they, they want to, um, you know, roll out onto this this plane um, as... You know they need our consent and obviously silence is acquiescence so they see our silence is, is consent to go ahead with these things and perpetuate their evil agendas so again you know we had during the march lockdowns of 2020 there was all this symbolism around 33 and 33 is obviously linked with ascension and jesus christ you know where he died on the cross at 33 and we got 33 vertebrae in us in our spines uh, which otherwise linked to 33 degrees in freemasonry and the 33rd degree in fahrenheit if you talk about temperature is actually 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. And so it's that point where we actually start coming off ice and we start waking up, uh, basically coming back to life. So it's all very symbolic to enlightenment. And so what the dark forces love doing is, is to invert and twist this um, in order to, you know, invert what is actually happening organically in terms of this, this ascension energy that's coming in. So we'll just play this so it'll be self-evident. As of today, and I say as of today at this hour, uh, we have 33 confirmed positive tests for the virus. Yesterday we had 22 cases. Today we have 33 cases. So it's gone up by 11. Uh, uh, that brings, those are 11 new cases. Uh, 22 goes to 33. As we sort through this here uh, in Arkansas, uh, today uh, I, we have 33 confirmed positive cases in Arkansas. Uh, as of today, we have 33 confirmed cases uh, with Boston residents. We expect those numbers to climb. As of this afternoon, we have 33 Pennsylvanians who have tested positive for COVID-19. 
And not all this shows as well as how they've literally got everything under control. The media, the finance, the banks, the governments, they're all controlled by the same forces. Um, and they're just mocking Jesus. Basically, this is all this is ritualizing is, is the coronavirus is coming into the Western world right on March equinox around Easter where so-called, you know, the sun passes over basically the equinoctial point. That's all that is, the sun being Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for man's sins. It, in the hot cross bun and all this symbology around Easter, the, the star in the east, that's all it's doing. It's just mocking this this um, otherwise beautiful wisdom and knowledge which they've they've kept locked up and only taught the masses the the exoteric, literal, um, dumbed down, ignorant version of these these spiritual teachings in order to you know keep us in a subdued and subjected state to the state to serve the state to serve them to come out. Um, so as of this morning, so they love doing this just to rub it in our faces and mock everyone. There were 33 confer- uh, cases in North Carolina. Anything to you, lots to get to tonight. I'm Leon Hendricks. We want to start with new information into our newsroom within the past couple of hours. There are now 33, 33 confirmed cases of the coronavirus in Michigan. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us with the news at six. I'm Richard Gearhart. Karina Corral has the night off. More cases of the coronavirus were confirmed today in San Luis Obispo County, bringing the total number now to 33. 33. Right now, Georgia is reporting a total of 99 cases in 19 counties. That is 33 new cases from just yesterday. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Swenson. More cases and more events affected. Here is the latest coronavirus news. There are now 33 cases in Louisiana. As expected. As expected. The the number of cases of COVID-19 jumps. A total of 33 people in our state have been tested and are confirmed to have the coronavirus. Day four of the shelter at home order brought six new confirmed cases of the coronavirus to San Luis Obispo County, bringing the total number to 33. All troopers will be professional, polite, and will treat everyone with dignity and respect. These latest steps as the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Rhode Island jumps by 33 overnight. Four more deaths reported overnight. The death toll now stands at... The Ministry of Public Health has confirmed a batch of 33 new COVID-19 patients. China now has an accumulated number of cases. The Ministry of Public Health has reported that the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Thailand remains at 33. Ten new confirmed cases have been uh, reported in Malaysia, bringing the total now to 93. From Director General Dr. Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah said they were first and second generation close contacts of case 33. So there you go. It just goes to show all around the world at this time, around Easter, it's all occult ritualization of... You know, otherwise something that's quite holy. Um, they love inverting and mocking in the faces of the masses because most people are ignorant, to be honest, because they're all products of their system. They haven't been educated properly. And it's plain to see that, you know, this this whole thing has been planned. Look at Event 201. And, you know, what also what also happens around March that, that during the lockdowns in 2020 was obviously the rollout of the so-called 5G um, which they were very quick to roll out with all the satellites they wanted to pump up in the atmosphere, as well as all the towers and lampposts, which they've been changing really silently in the background over the last kind of five or six years, I've noticed, with you know changing the incandescent lights out into the LED um, smart grid technology, which is able to communicate with one another in, in terms of setting up this whole kind of smart grid. So I won't play this, but what, what it otherwise depicts is what this change in energy that we've been um, exposed to in terms of man-made EMF, we've gone from the fourth generation, the fifth generation is the equivalent of going from one watt of energy to 200 watts of energy exposure, which is a 200 times increase. Now this this document, this documentary, I think was released back in like two, the early 2000s, and it was already advocating the ill health effects of one, the first generation, second generation, third generation, on people's health, specifically the pineal gland, which is linked to our internal ascension and our ability to connect to spirit and our our soul self, you know, our higher self. And so this is also linked to healing the body, which is the main gland which releases melatonin, which regulates the the wake sleep cycle um, in conjunction with, again, the sun, the corona. And so people who are exposed to this in this web of EMF that we can't really get away from, unfortunately, um, but we can obviously put take measures, especially in our bedroom when we're sleeping, 
in order to try and protect ourselves through shielding this EMF. And so all it was depicting is basically the proof and the scientific evidence, which are in the thousands, that even at the third generation or the first generation level, it's seen as a carcinogen. And there's, there's plenty of cases to show people, you know, if electrosensitivity and, and long-term chronic health issues actually contribute towards, um, you know, cancers and Ill, Ill health and disease. Um, so, you know, this, this technology, we've got to be very careful of, you know, how far it goes in terms of, um, you know, what it does to our health and ascension and consciousness as a collective. And, you know, we need to keep these things in check, basically. But, yeah, so, they, you know, they're also filling the, fulfilling the agenda of transhumanism to turn man, which obviously is another thing, to turn man into a cyborg, an automaton, so they have complete control of the soul. The false ascension path of immortality is going to be promised through technology. And so anyone who was electrosensitive would have felt a change in the Earth resonance around March, April time, 2020, like I had. And I had like increased tinnitus, and I still get it to this day. I mean, I've been put under frequency attacks and psychic attacks due to what I'm doing, um, which I've learned to manage, obviously, which you, you have to. Otherwise, you know, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger, basically. But that was very testing time for me. Um, because they came after me based on you know some of the things I was doing here with the letters I was sending in and reclaiming my crown, um, and the things I was getting up to, being a pain to the system, because I'm res resisting their their plans and helping us you know spread this enlightenment. Um, but you you if you are sensitive to these things, you might have noticed this too. So you know it's, it's interesting, um, and so yeah, it helps block out the cosmic energy upgrades and shuts down our pineal gland, hindering our ability to heal properly. So exactly, it makes sense. We're getting all this new ascension energy coming in which is unlocking people's enlightenment and awareness and awakening, as it were, then it makes sense for them in order to put up an artificial grid, which if you look on any um, like Stellarium app where you can scan the skies and see where the constellations are on the planets, you'll see it's almost impossible to see the stars because there's absolutely thousands of satellites which are just littering the sky, which is part of the SpaceX, you know, putting all these Skynet satellites up in order to help put Earth in this artificial grid or matrix and you know in order to maintain the frequencies that they want to bestow on humanity in order to maintain their control by the dark forces so it's, it's all quite obvious when you start connecting the dots and seeing these things play out given you know what we've just gone over so far so it says in the bible you know 1260 days from the great sun in heaven satan is said to return i mean that was saturday 6th of march 2021 which was you know slight slightly later than what obviously happened with the corona rollout but there's no mistaking that you know back in 2020 that that was almost like you know a good three years into the seven year tribulation so it was like and what they did was obviously to ritualize the return of satan which is you know who they serve and who they worship basically they're a satanic cult was the whole kneeling ritual we all heard about this we all know about this and so they got everyone to kneel under the banner of racism but all they're doing is again ritualizing bending the knee which is again giving away your sovereignty to the royalty or the king, which is who they herald and worship, which is Satan. So the masses are unwittingly just being tricked again by the dark forces to bend a knee to Satan and the coronavirus, which is otherwise the inverted version of the sun, which is Saturn, which is Satan. So, you know, so many people are just <laughs> unaware of these things. But when you become learned of the occult, you don't have to be... Uh, you know a cult all that means is what's hidden and what's been kept secret so anything that's been kept secret you're going to be careful of like jesus says anything that's whispered in your ear shout from the roof rooftops and so that's all they've done and the only reason they can maintain their power is to keep people ignorant and away from these so-called occult things which is why they generate so much fear around oh don't study the occult oh don't do this and don't do that you know because it keeps you away from the truth and the truth will set you free quite literally I mean, personally, I, I had what happened in 2021 went after the point where he's meant to return, so-called Satan. I actually had a couple of dreams of seeing the devil in my dream. Um, and he was exactly how it's depicted in Hollywood. Um, I mean, I won't go into it too much, but, you know, I had a lot of synchronicities there. And I've actually seen, I believe, one of these fallen angels with um, a bat. There was a bat symbol. There's a lot of bat symbolism in 2020. Obviously, the bat with the coronavirus, the bat being, you know, the bat out, out of hell, symbolic to Satan with these fallen angels, these jinn um and demiurge and then you obviously had the the rise of gregory david hallett who also was claiming to be the the rightful heir of the the throne of um the united kingdom and a lot of his videos i remember decoding some of his videos and there was a lot of bat symbolism um, put in there too so again it's all tied into this this 
deceiving the Sipirati and Shaitani, um, satanic forces trying to invert the truth and mislead the people and keep them busy whilst they roll out their plans in order to basically hook everyone up to the hive mind through technology. So the, the, again, the Cabal again announced his arrival during the end of 2020 with this cheesy commercial portraying the devil matching a personification. So on top of that, I mean, there's so much more. If you look at the music videos that were released, um, Little Nicky and like the shoes, these shoes with like actual blood in the bottom of the soles and the Nike boots with the inverted pentagram on top. Just have a look around you and like some of the football boots that were being released in the shops from Adidas were, were like um, demon technology, stuff like this. So all of this was starting to leak out um, into the world due to, again, the time and rinse. There's no denying the signs and what they're obviously trying to bring about as the new normal in order to blend the boundaries of good and evil and to accept Satanism Satanism in our lives in this whole new world order where all our freedoms are stripped from us. So just have a look at this. Oh, I've dated much worse guys than him. Much worse. I mean, at least he's famous. I started by using the Match custom search filter. I filtered out joy, happiness, toilet paper, and reason. Boom. Most years I've dated are a little, I don't know, straightforward. I mean, there's a little misery, but nothing truly soul crushing about them. I just want to be remembered, you know? Do you know the poem, The Road Less Traveled by Shakespeare? I actually have the tattoo of it. Don't ask me where. You devil. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> she gets me. That's the best part. When you meet someone that takes time to see beneath the surface. Of the earth. <laughs> it's just a perfect match. It's just, it's just their way of announcing to the world. Like I said, they, they always announce the truth in movies and music and video games, etc. I think Cyberpunk 2077 as well. I mean, this is never to be what they want. And if you listen to the Rudolf Steiner's speeches, which we'll go over in a second in another slide, you know, like I said before, their goal is to turn everyone into automatons in order to take away their free will. Um, so they're really well advanced in their plan at the moment, given what's going on. Um, so yeah, pay attention. This is why it's important to claim back your crown and sovereignty because where the crown lies apparent at the moment is in the hands of the devil and these demonic forces, unfortunately, which I will prove to you right now through this wonderful man's research that our governments and this whole oppositional, institutionalized systems in order to keep us divided, um, as in you know, Diablos or order ab chao, which is the Freemasonic mantra of order out of chaos, is to keep this dialectic going where people split, divide and conquer. And this is all deliberately done by the Disiparati or the, the Shaitani, as, as Pierre Sabak refers to him. And his research, he did over a decade of research going over the etymology, the paranomasia, which is the pun, and wordplay and polyglottal symbolism in all of the ancient languages like Semitic, Aramaic, Hebrew, Latin, English, and even in the um, Japanese kanji um, texts and myths and cultures and religions to show that they all show of the hidden codes that are embedded in the language of the intervention of the serpents, the fallen angels, the dragons, otherwise depicted again, like in the book of Revelation, the timer in the great tribulation, Satan, Shaitan. And so let's hear it from the horse's mouth himself. This is very interesting. Prove to you the governments are not your friends. You must come out from under the jurisdiction of these governments. Claim back your sovereignty yourself. So, um, observing the linguistic evidence obtained from the etymological record, we can see also that the monarch, in a legal and in a religious sense, is um, deemed to be a deity. Um, his lineage originates from this angelic source um, and is identified with the signifier of the ship, a symbol which is also intrinsically associated with the government. So, an extension of the monarch or the leader, which is correlated with this angelic lineage, we can see also that the state and the government and its executives themselves are extensions of this idea conceptually. Um, so this is a very important concept and um, we need to then begin to start breaking down some of the etymologies regarding the government and the state. So, okay, if we look at the top of the slide, we can see that the um, king um, 
basically is an extension of the angel, and the angel is the controller of the state. If we were talking about this symbolically, we would talk about the um, ship of state. So in theory, the government is an extension of the angelic vessel, a craft which is controlled or instituted from a heaven. So there is this mirror image between um, uh, kingship, rulership um, over um, the kingdom, and this idea that this authority is extended from heaven, and it's extended from a boat or a ship. So the idea that the monarch is an appendage to the angelic vessel, an agency that regulates the earth and its laws from heaven, is deconstructed and is encoded in the idea um, or in the definition of rulership and government. So for instance, the term government we can see is from the Latin root gubernare, which is to steer or to rule, and is related to gubernatio, a navigator of a boat. Um, so the connotation is of the prince or the navigator who controls the ship of state. Um, the etymology gubernatio, a navigator of a boat, again is coming back from the classical language from the Greek um, Kubernau to steer a ship and are terms illustrative of government referred to variously as the ship of state, in other words government. As previously indicated, the noun state is a loan word from the Greek noun stratos and army. So we can see how uh, these terms are beginning to tie up. Um, the angels themselves are deemed as crew members of vessels. The king is in, himself is, um, is deemed as kingship. There is this extension of the angelic vessel. And the state itself is mapped out according to the laws of the vessel, according to this angelic ship. Um, the state itself is an extension of this vessel. So we can see that the Greek word stratos and army informs the etymology state and is an appellation used in biblical discourse to specify the angelic host. As we said before, the term host in the Latin connotes an invasive or a foreign power, um, one which is alien. And as we said before, in Aramaic, zari is an alien or is an angel. The two terms are interchangeable. We are talking about this force which is an invasive um, force which has instituted governments. So at an abstract level, the denomination Sebastos, an emperor, signifies a pilot or a controller of state and is depicted technically as a mariner, an echelon that corresponds in the Hebrew language with Seboa for the host, um, in other words, a crew of a naval vessel. Um, a royal epithet, the titular Sebastus, is synonymous with an agency which is identified with an angelic force. Um, and in the Semitic, um, the government also is an agency of the angel and appertains to a royal pedigree, one which is um, instituted from heaven. So we're going to um, look at this now. Um, once we go back into the Semitic um, etymology, we see this uh, correlation between the angelic lineage and government. So, for example, um, if we refer to this slide, we can see that um, the term Satan, um, which is the arch-fallen angel, um, the term Satan means an adversary, um, but in the original context, um, um, it, uh, the term Satan could also refer to a political party. And we see this relationship with the etymology of Shilton, which is government. So metaphysically, we can see that um, uh, the governments themselves are affiliated to the Shaitani. Um, they are, by nature, adversarial. Um, they, they are oppositional or adversarial. Um, and this goes back to the idea of the fallen angels, this um, dichotomy between the human and the um, angelic lineage. Um, once again, um, the Satanic lineage is... Um, um, it is correlated with Sultan, um, a power or a ruler, a Muslim sovereign. So the um, bloodline of the Sultan, in much the same way as Malak and Malak a king, we can see his bloodline also, in this context, is aligned to the Shaitani or to the fallen angels. Um, if we, let's, if we took uh, the Greek example as well, we can see that um, there is a polyglottal pun in the Greek also, um, which is very reminiscent of the Hebrew and the Semitic. So in Greek, we can see that there is this um, relationship between bull, which is a senate, and diabolos, which is a devil. Um, and uh, Baal, which as we said before is a lord of Bahara sailor. Now this um, dichotomy is perhaps best um, um, elaborated in the English because we have the upper and the lower house. The lower house ref refers to the commons. Um, commons in this context coming from the Latin etymology um, signifying one who is hairy, um, hair being a mammal signifier. And then we've got the upper house, the house of lords, um, which is closely identified with the um, um, with the um, emblem of the dragon, the dragon being this personification of this um, angelic bloodline, this uh, monarchical um, bloodline. So um, I just want to um, avert your attention now to the um, slide because um, we have this depiction here of um, Zeus and we can see that he's holding on to this ball. This ball is to signify the ophanim or the circular ones, um, the circular ones being a reference to an angelic vessel. Um, but in his hand he has this um, thunderbolt and the thunderbolt is... Um, it's closely equated um, in, in the Greek with drachon, which is to flash. So a flashing deity um, has obvious connotations of lightning and thunder. So the thunderbolt itself is this um, signifier of the dragon. So um, again, if we just look um, at this uh, medieval um, painting, um, we can see that the um, lineage of the king um, um, is represented um, in relation to this um, daemonic or this um, angelic lineage. In this context, these are fallen angels. Um, this here are representations of the jinn. And um, we're going to see that the jinn and the fallen angels, in particular the seraphim themselves, um, are correlated with the jinn. So, for example, as we said before, the seraphim um, 
seraph, uh, which is fire, um, from which we get the etymology seraphim, the, the flaming ones, the shining ones. We see also that the jinn themselves, that they are born um, from the smokeless fire. So the jinn and the seraphim are one and the same thing. Uh, the jinn are the fallen state of the seraphim. So, if we look at the conclusions pertaining to the angelic sailor and their institutions, the government, uh, we can see that there are three um, crucial points. Uh, we can see, number one, that the angels are compared to mariners of heaven, and uh, both of these confederacies are regarded as an alien power betokened to the signature of the dragon. As we said before, host is a foreign or an invading army. It is this foreign alien agency. Um, Number two, uh, we can see that the symbol of the government and its, um, and its comparison to our boat um, is obvious. Um, and this um, primarily it indicates an organisation that is directed primary, primarily from heaven. And number three, most importantly, the king is an arbitrator of heaven and his mixed bloodline is angelic um, or alien. Terms, as I said before, are interchangeable in Aramaic, so therefore we have Zari, which is an a um, angel or an alien, uh, and is, is uh, relates to Sari, which is a boat, because these, um, this, age, this alien offspring is correlated with this angelic boat or this angelic vessel. Um, in the modern tradition, we would say that these are aliens. So... We can see that enshrined within the constitution, the king is deified and is enlisted as the legal, legal guardian of the sovereign state, a mediator between heaven and earth. Interwoven from the same strand, the secular state, Latin gubernator to steer a boat, is viewed functionally to be an imago of the sacerdotal permitted. So in other words, the priesthood um, and, the sacerd um, and the sacerdotal tradition, the priestly tradition um, and the state, they come together as one, they coalesce as one, um, and the signifier of this is the boat, the angelic vessel. Thus the ship of state, the government, is shown to lie in perfect alignment with its heavenly counterpart Greek nous a ship a cognate of nous a holy sanctuary so if we if we look here um, at the slide we can see that the ship of state in Greek at least um, is once again is identified with the holy sanctuary so nous a ship is identified with nous a holy sanctuary um, and again um, it, we can see that there's this connection with nous which is mind so there is this um, governing intelligence behind the ship of state and this intelligence is deemed as being angelic now, in Latin, we can see that the relationship between um, intelligence and the ship of state is related between serpents and serpent. As we said before, the Hebrew word for a sailor is sapan. So there is a close affinity between a sailor, um, serpents a serpent in the Latin, in the Hebrew, sapan a sailor. Um, but we see also that there is this relationship in Latin between serpents a serpent and sapiens wise. Now, in Semitic also, the same wordplay um, is prevalent. So, for example, Baal a lord. Um, is another designation of Bahara Sela. And we see um, his um, mind, is, um, we can see is related to Baal, the Egyptian noun for uh, the mind. So there is this connotation um, of intelligence, this governing intelligence. In the Babylonian, Akan Aseraf is closely equated with Akal, reason, sense, or intellect. Again, within um, Hebrew and Arabic, Malak, an angel, a mock, which, um, which refers to brains. Um, again, Shatir, which is clever or cunning, and Shaitan, which is Satan, because the archangel or the seraphim, the um, Shaitani, the fallen angels, they are deemed as being um, clever, um, as intelligent. Um, once again, there is this correspondence with the jinn, so the jinn are figured as Gioni, which is brilliant, or intelligent. So in other words, we can see that the angels themselves are equated with esoteric knowledge. And if we look at Jura's slide on the screen, um, this etching shows that the angels themselves are equated with this um, esoteric knowledge. And again, if we go into the Greek etymologies, we can see that this knowledge is referred to as Pythag Pythagorean knowledge, um, Greek Puthonagoras, the speaker of the serpent. And indeed, this uh, knowledge is contrasted with human knowledge. Euclid, who wrote the treatise on geometry, um, is etymology in Arabic. Euclid is to ape or to copy from the Arabic noun curd, which is an ape. So the signifier of the ape is of human knowledge. Thus it was said um, that um, there were no royal roads to Euclid's um, treatise um, on geometry um, because the royal, the, the implication is, is that the monarch is angelic and that Euclid's treatise um, were based upon this human knowledge um, which is distinct and, we, and which there is this di dichotomy. Now, um, going back to the idea of the state as a nautical vessel um, and equated with knowledge, we can see that it's parallel politically to the nation state. So therefore, we see that there's this relationship between stratos and army and its governmental structures, in particular the vassalage or vessel, which is mirrored with this priestcraft. Now, in the connotation, we can see that craft, although that there's a messianic connotation um, with the builders, and the builders is another term for an angel, but the priestcraft also refers to the craft as in a boat, as in the ship of state. An uh, anchorage of state and its existence is more celestially to heaven and earth. Accessory to the governments and its laws is precipitated contractually through the sanctuary, which is enlisted as a signifier of the boat. As I said before, nous a boat and nous a sanctuary in the Greek. Now, connection between the ship and sanctuary celebrates theologically the residential place of God, 
and is an idea further elaborated in the Judaic commentaries. So not only are we finding this encryption within the um, Greek language, but we also find this theologically within the religious um, texts and within the religious scriptures. So for example, in the songs of, for the Holocaust of the Sabbath, uh, we can see um, that the holy place of God, the celestial habitation of the God, is a common precis for the sanctuary. So they're one and the same thing, and they are um, connected to the signifier of the boat. It is a site that houses the various chariots of the gods. So these um, chariots or boats are described variously as boats or ships, and draws analogy with the modern UFO. This um, exorbitant apparatus is, according to scripture, able to scale the heavens and is understood as a type of vehicle. Um, that once again, it draws its comparison with the angelic cherubim and their flying wheels. Um, so if we look at what the scribe has to say about these vehicles in the songs of the Holocaust, um, the scribe writes, And the chariots of his innermost sanctuary will utter praises together, and their cherubim and wheels will bless wonderfully the chiefs of the godly figure, and will bless him in the holy innermost sanctuary. So we see here that there is this connection with, between the boat and the sanctuary of God. And if we look here at this slide, um, the slide shows the chariots of the gods. Um, the wheel itself is cut off on the slide, but this is actually a, ch a chariot. Um, but the representation of the chariot is of the keel of a boat. So we're seeing here that the um, boat itself is an important signifier of the angelic mariner. Now the wheel of the chariot is used to refer to the ophanim, the circular ones. The circular ones um, is another term for an angelic vessel. And we see that there is this correspondence between the vessels of gods, which are represented as the ships, or the chariot. The chariot itself usually combined with the signifier of the boat, but the circular wheel, um, a motif of the angel, of the, of the wheels of the circular ones. And again, there, there is this um, correspondence with the UFO tradition of the UFO phenomenon. And just to add, um, taken from his book, The Mode of Reality, page 32, to conclude, the essence of language loans itself to symbolism, represented sublimely through the study of philology and homonyms. A hidden mentor of man, the angel in occult law is a reptilian entity, distinguished as the hidden master or king. Principally the dragon, a teacher of words and arithmetic, embedded knowledge of itself sequenced in numerical codes, a secret history veiled in mathematics, geometry, astronomy, semiology and language. Systematic and intelligent, the adoption of signs is discursive of arcane wisdom pertaining to the snake and its concealment. Untrusting towards humans, this creature hides behind a cult ritual. Frightened of being uncovered, it uses war, economic and political, political coercion to force nations to do its bidding. Ancient accounts suggest the snake is duplicitous in its designs and dealings with man. This book intends to reveal the nature of the beast. And it says in footnote 88, page 35, when it goes to referring to the use of political coercion, etc., and using nations to do its bidding, a deceiver of humanity, the reptile contrives <clears throat> the deceiver of humanity, the reptile contrives social, religious, political and sexual boundaries. Ideologically, it governs and opposes labour and conservative, capitalist and communist, fascist and liberal, green and globalism. Compartmentalisation of all the religions is regulated through the partition of the priesthood. This includes the Sunni and Shiite, Catholic and Protestant, Pharisee and Sadushi, Hinayana and Mahayana, which is Buddhism, ad infinitum. Masonic societies describe this duality as order ab chaos, order out of chaos, a motto attributed to the shatani, adversary or opposer. So again, just re-emphasizing, do not go to governments, guys, in order to get help or want change within the system. The only option for us is to pull ourselves completely away, remove ourselves from under their system as a sovereign in full control of our paper contracts and procedures, issuing our own identifications and effectively becoming our own government. Um, where we hold our own records, which is everything that I teach on this course. And then we can put them to use as trustees, which they have taken an oath as public servants to serve us, we, the people, the sovereign people, the free sovereign people, men and women of the living. So again, just proven to you that just be careful. You know, you may be stuck in the artificial matrix of control a little bit when you still believe that their courts and their systems are going to provide you remedy. They're not. They're governed and overseen by forces that are beyond a lot of people's comprehension. So just to, again, re-emphasize this and give more credibility to what Pierce and Bax, wonderful researchers, concluded, what everything else that's going on, which should be self-evident. So if there's still any more doubt, here's some more proof. You know, similar roles in governments and Freemasonry are found in the hierarchy of demons. You've got Satanakia, commander-in-chief, you know, and all these people, all these um, so-called titles, field marshal, inspector general, prime minister, etc and then obviously within the freemason you've got inspector generals the top 33rds head honcho 
And you've got, you know, what they're looking to do is basically bring about a Lord of the Aeon, Horus, through a mass ritual war, um, blood, blood sacrifice, basically, because blood, blood sacrifice, blood is the currency in the spirit worlds in order to um, get deeds done by these entities. And so that's their currency in order for these beings down here, the flesh and blood, to work with these demons and spiritual entities, they must spill blood, which gives a whole new definition to the meaning of what Jesus did com coming down here. Um, in order to spill his blood, the son of God, God's blood, blood basically, in order to carve a way back for men and women who are, you know, um, honourable, who have those Christ-like principles and seek the truth and seek a way out um, in order to, you know, well, seek redemption basically and salvation. But we can't, you know, just rely on that alone. The whole point is we've got to rely on ourselves um, in order to make this happen and actually bring heaven on earth rather than let hell on earth be summoned due to all these guys, you know, which are really well advanced in their in their plans, um, in order to bring this about, which we're seeing all the signs of at the moment spilling over into our reality. So, this this gentleman, five hour presentation worth watch on YouTube. It's called X Factor Winner Reveals World Secret Religion. So, go and watch that. I highly recommend if you haven't watched it already. Otherwise, it breaks down everything we kind of know, which is what's going on in Hollywood and the celebrities and how they're being used as puppets by the, the Shatani, um, which is overseen by all the governments and all the corporations where they, they all lay in the same bed. We all know this by now. Um, so again, just emphasizing the importance of coming out from under their control. Um, so as you can see, the influence of these entities cannot be ignored. Always discern for yourself and use reason and logic. I can only speak from first-hand experiences, which confirms a lot of the events that are unfolding. Um, I won't go through this in this presentation, uh, but you can check this out in the full presentation if you wish. It's otherwise decoding some of the stuff I've seen in films, Justice League, Dark Side, Earth, Parademons, One World Religion, Cosmic Invaders, Truth Be Told, Cosmic Script. And I see this all the time in the movies when you become aware of these things. Movies are otherwise motion scripture. This is where they put the truth in order to convey predictive programming. And it's interesting, one particular scene, it said, you know, this world is divided, there are primitive species uninvolved and at war with one another, two separate to be one. Their free will, will must be ripped from them, like the other worlds, given absolution and one glorious belief to serve him, Satan. No protectors here. This world will fall like all the others. Um, and this is another one where, obviously, they're discussing, from what I've learned, there are things from another universe. They serve a dark power and old power. What do they want to invade, to conquer? Um, so, you know, we must, people must snap out of their amnesia and get real with themselves and realize that there are things here that otherwise would have, would have been labeled in the mystical, um, which are very, very real. And they have influences. They have been influencing mankind for thousands of years. And it's about time we get rid of this subjugate, you know, subjective control um, by being under them, um, where they've robbed us of our crown and, and claim back our sovereignty and our full power as we the people and get together. You know, divided we will fall, but together we will rise. So ascension, I'll just, I'll read a few, this is very salient actually, so I'll include this, so I'll read this out. This is from Pao Chang's Word Magic book, which I highly recommend getting and reading to introduce anyone as to all the tricks and traps that are not only happening in, in the legal world, but also with the language, and the language is the key, like I said, in the words, in terms of decoding our reality and what is governing our body politics, because the words are otherwise the, the code that governs the software, which moves our hardware, which is our body, which is the body politics. You know, so this is why it's so very important. This is what they've got a monopoly on, and this is what they've corrupted, which is what I teach in the course with the poison prefixes, suffixes, um, you know, turning nouns into verbs, so facts into puffs of smoke in order to basically, under assumption presumption, pull rabbits out of a hat um, within their legal court system, which is just where no law or fact is trying in court, which is what David Wynn Miller found out with his quantum grammar. Uh, which is bringing, back, bringing everything back into the now time in under a factual noun portraying um, uh, sense in terms of, you know, only displaying one, one thought, one sentence, one word, one meaning. So nothing can be convoluted. You can only display the facts and they hate that because, you know, truth in facts is otherwise like sunlight to a vampire of these guys. And so I've seen this firsthand. It does work and it's very powerful. But so yeah, just giving you more insight as well as to, you know, the time we're in, and especially around ascension, um, given the discourse that we see, like Earth going from 3D to 5D and all this, that, and the other, ET, etc. So every religion of mankind has its own version of ascension. For example, some religious teachers teach their followers that only the chosen people can ascend or only God can make someone ascend. 
Other religions, i.e. the New Age, have said that extraterrestrials will come from outer space to help us to ascend. In Christianity, it's taught that Jesus will one day come from heaven to save his people and bring them back to the kingdom of God. With so many different versions of, versions of ascension, how do you know which one is correct? To know if the ascension technique you're using may help you achieve spiritual freedom and ascend to heaven, ask yourself this question. Does this version of ascension teach me knowledge of empowerment and truth and how to be responsible for my spiritual growth? If your answer is no, you should stay far away from it. Any teaching that teaches you to rely on an external saviour to save you will not empower you to achieve spiritual freedom. This type of teaching is often used by the dark forces to condition you to think and act like a slave. The idea that an external messiah or an ET race will soon come to save certain groups of people is a psychological operation that is used by the dark forces to keep people living in a state of mental slavery. And that's taken from pages 135 and 136. This is on page 136. To find more evidence that the dark forces may be planning to harvest people during ascension, we need to investigate and study some of the hidden messages in the movie Jupiter Ascending. Before we do this, it is important to be aware that the dark forces and their flesh and blood minions like to use many movies and TV shows to disclose what they are doing or planning to do to mankind. The Matrix is one of the best examples of a movie that reveals to people the agendas of the dark forces in plain sight. One of the main reasons why the dark forces and the dark magicians disclose their agendas in movies and TV shows is because they do not want to violate people's free will. Furthermore, most people do not take the messages in movies and TV shows seriously. This allows the dark forces to show their agendas in plain sight without worrying about people becoming aware of their evil deeds. Be aware that they also like to use other media to reveal their agendas such as video games, music video, newspaper and magazine. I played Cyberpunk 2077 just to see the symbolism in there and I remember in one of the opening scenes there was Satan on a poster on the wall in the garage with, you know, depicted as how he is depicted in Hollywood and what you saw in the advert and what I've seen in the astrals. Very real, very true. So do not dismiss these influences on the world because, you know, the material world is a direct result of what goes on in the spiritual world. It's a carbon copy. Get it? Carbon is otherwise six neutrons, six protons, six electrons, six, six, six governed by Saturn, Saturn is Satan. Satan is said to be the prince of this world, so, you know, just pay attention. Where do you think you are? <laughs> but telling people, you know, what they are doing to mankind through movies, TV shows, music videos, video games, etc., the dark forces and their flesh and blood minions are giving people many chances to say no. When people ignore the dark forces, messages, and choose not to say anything, it means that they do not care enough to exercise the power of consent. Therefore, the dark forces can use that as an excuse to proceed with their diabolical plans. Remember, silence is a form of consent. And this is page 137. For you to not blindly give the dark forces your implied consent, you need to be aware of what they are doing. Your awareness is one of your most important spiritual powers for stopping the dark forces. When you become aware of what they are doing, you can say no. If enough of us say no, the dark forces will have to back off. If they refuse to back off, take actions to harm us they will have to face the cosmic forces and the justice system of god all thoughts intentions and actions are known by god and there is no escaping his laws let us focus our attention back to the movie jupiter ascending shortly after the halfway point of this movie there is a scene where titus shows jupiter a room full of thousands of vials that are filled with youth serums but drinking the serums it allows titus and his people to live for thousands of years the shocking thing about the serums is that they are made from harvesting dead people based on my research on ancient knowledge the secret ingredient that gives the serums the healing effect of longevity is ichor, the golden fluid that's believed to be stored in the spine. Um, so just to go back really quickly, so this is the sacred chrism. This is otherwise depicted on raising the chrism. So the Bible is a manual about physiological re regeneration, astrology, written in code, see gematria, providing us a path to enlightenment, atonement. 99% of the people believe the Bible is a historical book to be taken literally. It's not. It's about you and your path to enlightenment, you are the protagonist, you are the hero in every story, you are Jesus, <laughs> you are Neo, you are the one you've been waiting for. No one's coming to save you. All of these parables were written about and for you. And so this, this I'll, I'll go over this very briefly. So the Christ of Chrism is also a sacred fluid that is released in, the, in certain glands in the brain that helps aid ascension for those in the know and are willing to do the work in order to raise it back up the spine whereupon neurogenesis, ascension, and transformation slash healing of the body occurs, our true ascension. Um, you know, and all this symbology, which you can pause and read through in your own time, you can see that the seed, this seed is otherwise referred to the seed of life, which is also depicting Jesus as below in an astrobiological form. 
And it says here, the seed of life, manna, bread, Matthew 6, 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. And this is otherwise linked to, like I said before, the pineal gland and the importance of that. And so, you know, bodies are the temple of God. Our bodies are the temple of God. We are made in God's image, a receptacle to the soul and higher subtle energies in which DNA acts as antennae to receive all this wonderful cosmic information that way. We should be getting organically, but obviously there's a lot of distortion with, with these um, EMFs, man-made EMFs, which is you know done deliberately on purpose. This process of raising the chrism helps activate dormant brain cells and DNA to receive more light, information and spiritual awareness and gifts. The sun also aids in DNA activation, which is which it will become quite obvious with what the dark forces are doing to counteract this activation with what's going on in the world currently. Um, I also refer, this is to, yeah, so Jesus is the seed of life because he is the word of God. Return one tenth to the Lord, tithing, that's what it's otherwise referring to. The seed is the word of God. The bread manna seed, Jesus, and the holy oil, chrism, Christ, which is the precious sacred gift secreted by the claustrum, which is the gland that secretes this fluid, which is separated by the Eder and Pingala, ends up coming down and is married in Bethlehem, which is a solar plexus, with another kind of substance. And then it is deposited into your sacr sacrum, which is otherwise the chamber of secrets, where the coil of the Kundalini lies dormant until it's activated, just like in Harry Potter, under the film Chambers of Secret, the Chamber of Secrets, and the Philosopher's Stone. This is what it's all referring to. It's referring to this internal ability to actually unlock immortality organically. Um, and have this healing effect and neurogenesis effect and enlightenment and to be able to activate our spiritual senses in order to, you know, unlock either clairvoyance or clairsentience, etc. You know, things that we should naturally have but as a result of this intervention by alien forces, our DNA has been switched off and we're in a fallen state. Just as we're governed by fallen angels, we are literally in a fallen state as well because they've been doing all kinds of genetic manipulation experiments on us in order to keep us thumbed down so we're easily manageable prior to there's a point in time where humans were atavistically clairvoyant so they weren't easily misled by aromatic forces because they were able to see beyond the belief systems and scripts that were trying to be bestowed to them because uh, they can actually see what's going on firsthand in the spirit world so they've, they've got connection with nature and god itself and the nature of reality whereas you know ever since this kind of shutting off of these spiritual forces and abilities to see and have clairvoyance and all this, that and the other and discern for ourselves and get information right from the source, quite literally, of what manifests our material world, it, the battleground is now becoming the mind. And so beliefs and thoughts have become the single most powerful variable in achieving enlightenment, but also being pulled away into the darkness and ignorance, which is just ignorance. Ignorance is weakness, knowledge is power. So the Christmas tree, you know, the... Uh, gone through this so yeah the bread manna seed jesus holy chrism christ which is the precious sacred gift secreted by the cloud stream have the potential to prevent death and therefore save mankind from sin this is one of the reasons that jesus christ is the savior of mankind the christmas tree symbolizes the spine which is why we have the lumbar part of the spine which is linked to the tree our guts are basically our soil from which the plexus the solar plexus and all the nerve ganglions and blood vessels extract nutrients like a tree would from the soil into the body and our fruit is otherwise the brain and obviously what is outwardly expressed in our body so you know judge a man or woman by their fruits that's what jesus said you know if you have good thoughts good words good deeds then you're going to radiate this this goodness if you have bad thoughts bad words bad deeds and you, you just know it gives off that vibe, that energy, that vibration, and it's going to show in your appearance. And whether you treat your body with respect or not, it's also going to show in your body, just like a tree. If you, you know, if a tree has a bad fungal infection and the quality of the soil is very poor, i.e., the food they put in their gut is very poor, that the body draws its nutrients from, the tree, the lumbar, the spine, and the brain draws its nutrients from. Don't forget, your brain literally sits in your blood, it swims in your blood. Um, you know, you're going to see that tree or that person be a direct reflection of the quality of their thoughts and also of obviously what they put in their body, which is drawn from the soil, which is the nutrients that feed the tree, which feed the brain. And so to the degree that you have malnourished foods, intoxicating foods, and all the wrong kind of foods, the processed sugars, and etc., and all these, the what, four white devils, the flour, 
the processed sugars, the salt and the dairy, the homogenized and pasteurized dairy, then you're going to be, you know, effectively um, hindering your tree, your, your faculties, you know, your cognitive abilities, um, because it's not designed to eat all these things. And it's just going to end up feeding more funguses and parasites, which they excrete their toxins into your body, which are poisons actually used in biochemical warfare, which can actually decompose rock in the soil. And that's what they're designed to do to feed the minerals to the plants. <laughs> Um, there'll be peeing and pooing in your body and so that adds even more stress and if that ends up you know in the blood of your brain um, that's actually linked to a hell of a lot of diseases and mental um, diseases and over 90% of the population actually have fungal and parasite infections based on this so there's a huge dysbiosis going on in the soil like it is in mother earth like it is in our gut because we're a direct reflection of mother earth we're otherwise walking trees and a miniature version of the earth as well as the cosmos and all these forces that are at play um, so if you want to heal the planet first heal yourself because a healthy body means that you're eating healthy and supporting organic farming practices this that and the other and so this sacred fluid is otherwise linked with ichor which is the blood of the gods which is depicted in the greek myths which prolongs their life and longevity and so this is what's going to take us back to obviously if we're able to raise the chrism ourselves internally and not spill the seed through licentious behavior acidic foods like i said before alcohol eating the wrong foods processed garbage crap which are denatured which have no organic nutrients and phytonutrients and secondary nutrients whatsoever that is needed for your body to be self-sufficient and to able you know to be able to be vital and have chi energy and generate all this chi energy well then to the extent you're not doing all this you know, you will suffer and you will die and you will age and you will decay and you will find it hard to discern fact from fiction and do all these things. And so what this fluid is, otherwise this Christ fluid within us is obviously also linked to, again, this possible ascension and harvest and what's been going on in terms of not only extracting our sweat equity energy here within the system, which is just our life force energy here in this plane, but also what may be going on in a spiritual sense um, in terms of extracting and what could be leading up to you know the so-called ascension that they're talking about because there's no denying that if you look at population forecasts going forward in the next 10 years before their agendas like gender 2021 gender 2030 there's there's a seemingly huge reduction in population um, and the georgia guidestones maintain a population of 500 million people i mean this could maybe give us clues and so like i said just discern for yourself and so this this particular scene again in jupiter ascending with the eucerin vials I couldn't find one in English, um, but it otherwise says, of which I'll read out loud as this plays. Titus, come with me. Jupiter, what is that? Yeah, it's many names. Regen X, Resell, Nectar. There are various levels of usefulness and quality, but this is the most pure and most valuable solution made by the house of Abrasics. Jupiter, Kalik came out of a bath. Titus, naturally, my sister didn't explain what it is or where it comes from. It comes from people. Each unit is refined from approximately 100 human beings. Jupiter, what? Titus, your planet is a farm, Jupiter. There are thousands of planets like yours set up for families like mine to supply an ever-increasing demand for more time. Jupiter, are you saying you killed 100 people to make this? Titus, not me, but yes, someone did. Not unlike Butcher and a herd of cattle. Jupiter, oh my God. And what's interesting is Abrasix is the family that run this corporation of farming humans across the galaxy. Um, and a play on the words, obviously you just rejig the words around, the letters, Abraxas in Gnostic Christianity, Christianity. It's a mystical fellow who is claimed to be both an Egyptian god and a demon. His name contains the number 365, the number of the days in the year. To continue, it takes life to give life. The Ouroboros, this universe, you know, everything ends up in the mouth of another creature in this universe. The plants live in love and service to the zebra. The zebra lives in love and service to the lion. The lion dies and returns its energy to the soil to feed the microorganisms. So the cycle repeats itself. And you've got to ask yourself the question, who do you live in love and service to? You may well be tricked to giving your energy and soul away to another entity higher up the food chain. And so life is an act of consumption, Jupiter. This is what he says. Eddie Redmayne playing this character. To live is to consume. And so, you know, the plants live in love and service to the zebra. The zebra lives in love and service to the lion. The lion dies and returns its energy to the soil to feed the microorganisms. So the cycle repeats itself. We as humans, when we die, where do we go? We get we get put into a, a coffin and so we are unable to return our energy and nutrients and minerals into the earth which is our mother which is dying based on all the commercial farming practices and the chemicals and the intoxication that we're 
and the, and the corporations that were supporting that were doing this because people were going around unconsciously consuming the earth and all the things that Mother Earth is providing in abundance, but there must be a, a balance that's kept in this organic cycle of life where things have to be kept in perfect balance in order to return the energy back into balance and back into the, the organic cycle so new life can spring. What we're doing is there's more credits than debits. And so there's more debits than credits, rather. So we're, we're taking more than we're giving back. And this process of, you know, bearing, we're ritualizing this whole process, which is linked to Satan again, Saturn, with the six sided coffin which is linked to the hexagon which is the cube which is linked to saturn and the north pole which we'll go over later that all these things that you must be aware of that this is all rituals and this could always this is always seen as giving your consent just like ritualizing the external version of christmas which is santa claus coming down the chimney to deposit the wonderful christ-like fluid into the chamber of secrets which is the presence under the tree the spine the pine tree which is linked to the spine s pine in order for you to raise it back up. And so Santa Claus, otherwise Saint Nick, which is an anagram for Satan, because around 21st of December, they celebrate Saturnalia. And Satan is the dealer of karma. And so whether you're naughty or nice, so be good, you know, be, be good for heaven's sake, because Santa's in town, Satan's in town. And this is why I had a Kundalini rising experience where this I experienced this ascension firsthand on the 24th of um, December, quite literally Christmas Eve retaining the seed for about over 34 days at that point. But if you want to find out more about this process, go over to universaltrueschool.com and look at the books such as The Word Made Flesh by George W. Carey and The Occult Anatomy of Man by Manny P. Hall. These things are very real. Like I said, when you start experiencing these firsthand, the mythical and the fairy tales and all this, once you're able to decode them, which is what we're doing here in this presentation, you'll start seeing that, oh my goodness, wow. You know, there is a mystical version of ourselves. There is spirituality, there is soul, there is such thing as the astrals, the spirit realms, ET entities, malevolent forces. We've got to learn to navigate all this, all these contracts that are sucking us into, giving away our life energy to, you know, all these entities, which are just parasites. Like the government is literally a direct reflection of that which it has been seeded by, which are these, these fallen angels, and they're parasitical. They need our energy in order to survive, like any parasite has to live inside a host to draw its energy and life force therefrom. So just listen to this, quite interesting. Ouroboros, snake eating its own tail, cannibalistic. You know, if you have a, if you actually assess what's going on in this universe, unfortunately, this is what it, you know, this is what's going on. And humanity, to believe that we're right at the top of the food chain, um, is naive. Um, so we're always going to be aware. But as a sentient species such as us, you know, we we have the power of free will and consent. And so as long as you withdraw your consent and know not to get tricked and trapped into these hidden contracts, giving your life force away, like I said, not only within the system, but in, you know, lives beyond, then you can take back control. And it's all about, you know, again, like I said, learning all the things, claim back your crown. Don't let them take it away from you and invert your God-given powers. My mother taught me what was necessary to rule in this universe? By killing people? I create life! And I destroy it. Life is an act of consumption, Jupiter. To live is to consume. Now the human beings on your planet a million resource waiting to be converted into capital. And this entire enterprise is just a small part in a vast and beautiful machine defined by evolution, designed to a single purpose. To create profit. That's what your mother taught you, then I could see why you hated her. I loved my mother. And yet you're trying to kill me. My mother... made me understand that every human society is a pyramid, and that some lives will always matter more than others. And it's better to accept this and to pretend it isn't true. Is that 
why you killed her. How dare you! So you see, human beings are merely resources waiting to be turned into capital. All for one sole purpose is to make profit. This is exactly what's going on down as below down here every year, every lifetime for thousands of years, signing up to the system and being a, a vassal to the state, a serf in service to these, these lords. Who do you think the lord is? You know, it's linked to Baal. It's, you know, if you do the etymology of lord, it's otherwise, you know, linked to demonology. Again, so we must wake up because this all this this can only go on if we wouldn't well give our consent away and this this consent is often given away due to our ignorance and ignorance of the law is no excuse under their system and silence is acquiescence so if we don't say otherwise and they run all these rituals out we extend we you know we we partake in these rituals that bend in the knee um you know put presents under the christmas tree without thinking about the internal process within um you know sign up children away to the ward of the state with registering the birth sign of the mortgage which is otherwise a death pledge and all these contracts in that we take on the roles that we play as a result of this system you're like you know the driver taking the driver's license and it's all capitalized you know, if you look at your license it's all capitalized which is capitalist demetrio maxima meaning that you're you're nom de guerre you're a dead entity and they can treat you as that well if you're dead if you're given away your god given rights and powers and um unalienable rights and that which makes you sovereign and your crown well, then they could do whatever they please with that, to you without any repercussions from the universal justice team of God. It's as simple as that. And so just to carry on this theme of ascension, I want to draw your attention now to the harvesting, you know, Revelation 14, harvesting the earth and trampling the wine press. I looked and there before me was a white cloud and seated on the white cloud was like a son of man with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Well, that's interesting crown of gold linked to the corona again in the crown and the sharp sickle is otherwise linked to saturn which is the reaping the harvesting then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud take your sickle and reap because the time to reap has come for the harvest of the earth is ripe so he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth and the earth was harvested another angel came out of the temple in heaven and he too had a sharp sickle Still another angel who had charge of the fire came from the altar and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle. Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes in the earth's vine because its grapes are ripe. The angel swung his sickle on the earth, gathered its grapes and threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. They were trampled in the winepress outside the city and blood flowed out of the press, rising as high as the horse's bridles for a distance of 1600 stadia. Son of man, the man in the sign of the skies that we said before is otherwise Aquarius, look for the second coming of Christ. This, this all seems to be tying in with the harvest, which could be linked to this interplanetary corporate franchise, which does harvest sentient, sentient life forms such as us. If you look at, like I said before, the Georgia Guidestones and all the population forecasts going forward, so just keep that in mind. But this can only happen you know, if you give your consent away and you consent to all this and don't claim back your crown. And the sickle is obviously linked to Saturn, which is the Grim Reaper, which is Kronos, who eats his own children. And there's the, the famous hexagon on North Pole of Saturn, which is otherwise artificially induced by these rings, which are technologies in order to spellbind. If you spellbind something, you want to practice magic, you always draw the sigils within a ring, within a circle. And this is the art of magic, and this is otherwise happening on a, on a celestial scale, which uh, these dark forces have swept into the universe, I believe, of this solar system, like a virus, and have basically entrapped Saturn, which used to be the higher octave of that was Lucifer. Um, if you read some texts, that the higher version of Sat Satan was obviously Lucifer before he fell. Now he's Satan. Um, that, you know, this used to be a bright star like our sun. And because most systems, if you look in films and stuff like Star Wars, they depict planets having two suns in the atmosphere. And so, you know, we were, we were in a binary system, but that's since been taken, which is why they use the symbology of the one eye, because they've taken um, one of the suns, the light of this, this current solar system that we're in. Um, and obviously have now used that energy to bind it into a specific frequency, which is transmitted via the moon. If you believe in the, you know, the Saturn moon matrix, like the moon's a receptacle and an amplifier slash satellite receiver for these... 666 energy is coming from Saturn, which is linked to the cube, the hexagon, Saturn day, the Sabbath, 
you know, Jews, this the the Sabbath or whatever it is, the the Kaaba, the black cube in Mecca, and the you know the cube they put on their on their forehead and their wrist, and all the cube symbology, the black goo, um, artificial intelligence, and you know just look at what they want to try and achieve in terms of turning everyone into automatons. And so to add more emphasis to this, again in the movies, looking at what they're putting in the movies, Space Jam, there's an AI overlord in the Warner Brothers servers called LG Rhythm, and he calls it the serververse, and he's the AI god. And there's a lot of hexagram symbology there, obviously linked to Saturn, and this this kind of artificial matrix concept. And so just have a look at this. This is LeBron James, you know, obviously before he gets sucked into um, the matrix, as it were, and he has to play a game in order to get himself out of there, which again, it's all about contract. You know, you, you, you must, the devil's in the details. And, you know, this is all about contracting your life away and contracting your soul away and becoming aware of what may be seen by these forces as you willingly given your consent away. What in the matrix hell? Welcome. See, Welcome to see him getting sucked in. What in the Matrix hell? And just another one as well. This is a famous Star Trek scene, um, which you might be familiar with, which I'll play, which again is self evident. Direct synaptic stimulation might drive out the With aliens. the false light trap and death. I was right. I heard Tubac and Chicote in the doctor. You're an alien. You've created all these hallucinations, haven't you? This is what my species does. At the moment, just before death, one of us comes to help you understand what's happening, to make the crossing over an occasion of joy. And what is that? Our matrix, where your consciousness will live. I was being truthful when I said it was a place of wonder. It can be whatever you want it to be. Then why didn't you tell me this from the beginning? Why pretend to be my father? Usually people are comforted to see their loved ones. It makes the crossing over a much less fearful occasion. I've done this many times, but I've never encountered someone so resistant. Something's happening. The alien presence is getting stronger again. Fight it, Catherine. Fight it just a little longer. I'll have to try a Thoron pulse. My people are telling me to fight. They're trying to save me. They're trying out of desperation. It's hopeless. You're the one who sounds desperate. I don't get the feeling you're trying to make me comfortable. You're only interested in my agreeing to come with you. Because it's inevitable. And you don't strike me as any kind of good Samaritan. You're more like a vulture, preying on people at the moment of their death when they're most vulnerable. I've waited for you. I've been patient. But your patience is running thin. What's the real reason you want me in that matrix? Somehow I don't think it has anything to do with everlasting joy. You must go with me. If you could force me to go, you'd have done it all. You need me to agree, don't you? I have to go voluntarily. Wouldn't that be better than standing here in this endless debate? Let me tell you this. We can stand here for all eternity, and I will never choose to go with you. You're in a dangerous profession, Captain. You face death every day. There'll be another time, and I'll be waiting. Eventually, you're coming to my matrix. What I like about the scene is that it just depicts the power of not giving your consent away because free will is always respected in this universe. And it just goes to show that even down here, but even in the realms beyond, free will is always respected, but it can only be enforced if you know your rights, if you know what validates, you know, what constitutes a valid contract. And you can you know all of the tricks and traps that are used to try and engineer consent and that's all this system can do which is why they work around the clock 24 7 to try and engineer consent and drain your life force and power away by setting these things up like problem reaction and solution another thing i forgot to mention is obviously lucifer and it says here the wrath god to unleash his wrath it says down here take your sickle here it is gathered in grapes and threw them into the great wine press of god's wrath well Who's responsible for wrath under the seven deadly sins linked to Satan, Saturn. So, you know, you should be connecting the dots by now. And so just to continue again, ascension, you know, separating the weak from the chaff, good from evil, ignorant from the aware, weak from tares, sovereigns from slaves, God's children from the matrixes, automatons. 
We know, just looking around you, the split that's happening on planet Earth at the moment, and there is a split. And so this is very real, what's going on. So pay attention. I know everyone's at different levels of their journey in terms of their awakening. But let me tell you, I've, I've been catapulted in the last three or four years, mainly due to me seeking um, the truth. And my gosh, I've been given the truth. Seeking you shall find. I, I've been given more than I can chew at times. And I've been out of body. I've had these these mystical experiences. I've delved into the spiritual world. Like I said, I had a Kundalini awakening, actual crown chakra awakening experiences. So once these start infiltrating your lives, then then there's no doubt now that this is all true. And it's quite wonderful, actually. It gives a lot more meaning to life. But there's, there's a sense of urgency now in order to get this message out to people to you know come into their own sovereignty and their own empowerment and know that they have all the power gifted to them by God that they just need to exercise because it's only for ignorance that they are, are unable to exercise it because they don't even know they have it. And it's all based on knowledge. Knowledge is literally the single best remedy in dispelling fear that's engineered by the system. So this is a beautiful, again, allegory of the, the mustard seed and the wheats and tares, which gives you more insights to you know what to expect when we're going forward and what's actually happening on the earth at the moment with you know, what's happening with the fork in the road with people, you know, the vaccine, not vaccinated, people waking up and seeing what the government truly are and what's going on in the world and people are still stuck in to just being ignorant and serving the, the consumerist, materialistic, um, 666 left brain programming. Um, so yeah, it just gives you great perspective again. Knowledge is power. It's a beautiful allegory as well. The same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man, which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together unto the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh the tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. So yeah, just goes to show you know, that's what they're talking about in the Bible. They knew this was coming. This is, you know, they were in the great revelation, the great split is happening. So the turn about between good versus evil, duality, polarization, yin and yang, red shift, blue shift, light, shadow, positive, negative, one can exist without the other, or can it? You know, the eternal paradox. At the end of the day, it's all battery fuel. You know, a battery needs two poles in order to charge it, negative and positive. You've got the sun and Saturn in order to maintain duality. And it's depicted in all kinds of movies and fairy tales, etc., like Harry Potter, Voldemort, Jesus, Satan, Horus, Set, God, Satan, you know, Marvel Universe, Good versus Evil, Game of Chess, Star Wars, Jedi against the Sith, you know, Lord of the Rings, the Orcs with, you know, the forces of goods, the elves and man, um, you know, going up against Sauron, which was otherwise this fallen elf who was the one ring to rule them all. Lord of the Rings 
And so what is Saturn? Saturn is Lord of the Rings. He, he takes the longest to orbit around all of the seven visible planets with the naked eye that we can see from Earth. And he encompasses all that's within it. And so this is why they believe, you know, Saturn is the, the prince of this world and this domain within which controls time, which is old man Kronos, which is linked to the carbon based holographic reality that is being projected here, um, which is 666, which is six neutrons, six protons, six electrons. Doesn't mean it's necessarily evil, just means that, you know, given the information we have, if you know where you are and what's going on and all these processes that can unlock your own empowerment within, by going within and realizing these things, well, then you can easily transcend any limitations that are presented to you, either in this life, this plane, or any other plane, dimensions, or densities that exist. Because as you will become fully aware that, like I said before, free will is always you know, um, respected. And if not, then those entities that violate it are going to be met with such a wrath um, that I think they're even scared of. So it's never, ever, ever violated. Uh, if they do, then they're foolish and you know it's going to come back to bite them a thousandfold so ephesians 6 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places been telling us all along the main reason this is taken out of word magic power chain pages 71 to 72 the main reason that a large percentage of the world is in a state of turmoil or chaos is because we live in a reality where the divine masculine energy has become so strong and distorted that it has endangered the integrity of the harmonious interaction between the divine feminine and divine masculine energies. The result of this distortion has manifested potentially destructive things to Mother Nature, such as wars, nuclear weapons, transhumanism, artificial intelligence, genetically modified organisms, false religions, and tyrannical governments. Transhumanism is nothing more than the distorted version of the divine masculine energy wanting to prove to God that it can bear life without the physical body and achieve immortality without spirituality. And this left brain dominant scientist, sick way of wanting to prove to God that men can bear life without women, which bear the womb, hence womb men. The word transhumanism means the idea that the capability of the human species can be enhanced using technology. It is the idea that by adding non-biological components to a biological system, the human body, future societies will get quantifiable results in human ability and potential. The path of transhumanism will not lead to eternal life. Instead, it will eventually lead to near destruction of mankind, men and women. Men and, men and women need to learn how to balance the divine masculine and divine feminine energies so they can live in harmony with one another, or they will most likely destroy themselves in their home called Earth. I thought that was so salient and worth meditating on and taking away. Like I said, we're a direct reflection of the Earth because our bodies come from the Earth. And so... If you're supporting good farming practices, eating organic foods, and you support Mother Nature, it's as simple as that. If you're supporting commercially processed garbage foods and the farming industry and all these corporations that aren't eco-friendly, well, then you're just contributing towards destroying Mother Earth. You're a cancer in her eyes. And trust me, she will take measures, which is what we're seeing today, in order to curate natural disasters to rid the fleas and the pests and the parasites and the, the otherwise the cancers um, that exist on her because uh, she is sentient and she is very wise and purposeful, which is why you see no animals who are the most connected to the soul of Mother Earth ever perish during natural disasters because they know before it happens to sh seek shelter or be directed away from the danger. And so it's always the human casualties. <laughs> no animals die. Just look it up. It's always the human casualties. Because trust me, come into connection with yourself, with Mother Earth, and... You know, as you start treating your body with more respect, you start respecting nature, God, and Mother Earth, and then one another, and you start unlocking all the, the vital energies and chi, and you, your, your glass will be full, and it'll be spilling over, and you'll be able to give back to humanity and Mother Earth, and we can all be, you know, self-governing, sovereign citizens um, of this new epoch that will be birthed whilst everyone else gets harvested into the artificial matrix, which is obviously what, you know, unfortunately, I think a lot of people are being sucked into. Such is the level of ignorance and low consciousness awareness in today's society. But, you know, um, each to their own. And this is a journey that everyone's a part of. And it's it's all independent. Um, and like I said, it's the hero's journey. If you haven't worked it out, then I guess you're just going to be recycled until you do. So mRNA injections designed to order the DNA to produce coronavirus that's full of nanotech, femtotech, nanites, graphene oxide, 
all the junk that you don't want. Basically, everything that will be integrated with the Internet of Things, smart cities, homes, allowing great control over the human body and minds. So you can see it perfectly depicted. Images, you know, paints a thousand words. The right brain, the left brain. This is where they want to take people, automatons. This is where we should be going back to. But what we should be doing is bridging the two and staying right in the center where the eye is, the pineal gland. And so, you know, that's the middle path, basically not being pulled from one side to the other. Like I said, in this dialectic with the government, which is the sole purpose of the fallen angels and the shatani, is to keep you fighting one another, divide and conquer, order out, order out of chaos, and see beyond the bullshit and come into perfect balance, which is what nature keeps. The seven, you know, the pH seven, everything, you know, right in the center of not too hot, not too cold, and all the distances of the planets, you know, not too, not too sunny, not too light, not too dark. It's, it's all needed in order to perpetuate life. And this, this was shown to me in the beautiful Entheogen experience um, through loads of synchronicities and, and messages and insights um, that this balance has to be kept, this Goldilocks zone, in order to preserve life throughout the universe. And so as soon as this is upset or, you know, is out of balance, then it's, it's very detrimental to the evolution of um, those souls and those planetary systems. So it's very important that we come back into balance. Otherwise, higher forces will come in and make sure that, you know, we're wiped out basically in order to wipe the slate clean or heaven forbid, you know, planets actually die as a result of our, our ignorance and these, these aromatic forces. And to emphasize this, um, I'm just going to play a few minutes of a Rudolf Steiner lecture, which goes over the aromatic satanic luciferic beings. You know, their goal has been all along to interfere with our free will and turn us into automatons if we do not stand up for our rights. And so their goal is to kill the consciousness soul, the conscious soul within us, stop us really realizing our true power of free will. Technology slash scientific advances to draw the soul away from the organic godly body and into an, into an automation. Just look at what's going on. Jacked into the hive mind, AI. AI overlords and fallen gold slash angels so we can be a perpetual energy source to fuel their matrix. If you're not awake for the coming change, then everything detrimental for that point of evolution will take place. So just listen for a few minutes. The luciferic beings push us off track by interfering with our free will and keeping us in the dark about carrying out our free will. Though they make us into good people, indeed in this context Lucifer wants us to be good and spiritual, they also try to make us into automatons and rob us of our free will. In other words, the Luciferic beings want to help become clairvoyant in accordance with the principles of good, but without free will. They want to turn us into clairvoyant automatons, so to speak. By robbing us of our free will, they also take away our ability to choose evil. They want us to act based on spiritual principles, but only as a sort of imitation or copy without free will. Basically, if the Luciferic beings have their way, they will turn us into automatons. To explain this, we have to take into account certain mysteries of evolution. As you know, the Luciferic beings stopped developing at a certain stage in their evolution and now bring alien elements into our otherwise normal development. These Luciferic beings are greatly interested in preventing us from fully developing our free will because they themselves have not been able to develop it. Free will can only be attained here on earth. But those beings don't want anything to do with the earth. They are content with having gone through the Saturn, Sun and Moon evolution and that's where they want to stop rather than be part of earthly evolution. Basically, they hate our free will. They act very spiritually but do so automatically and this is extremely important and they want to raise us to their level, to their spiritual level. <clears throat> In other words, they want us to be automatons, albeit spiritual ones. The danger there is that if we become spiritual automatons before our consciousness soul is fully functional, we will sleep right through the revelation that is to come, the one I have described above. 
The Aramanic beings are also working to oppose that revelation. They don't want to make us particularly spiritual, but instead aim to deaden our consciousness of our own spirituality. That is, they want to instill in us the belief that we are nothing more than perfectly developed animals. Thus Araman is the great teacher and advocate of materialistic Darwinism and of those technical and practical activities in our earthly evolution that accept only the outer sensory life as real and to deny everything else. Araman is behind all endeavors aimed solely at spreading technology for the purpose of more efficiently satisfying our need for food and drink and our other physical needs that we have in common with the animals. The Aramonic spirits in our time strive to kill or darken our awareness of being made in the image of God. They want to kill the consciousness so within us by means of all kinds of sophisticated scientific advances. In previous ages it would not have done any good for the Aramonic spirits to try to obscure the truth with their theories because during the Greco-Roman epoch and even more so in still earlier times, people still had atavistic clairvoyance and the pictures it provided. And therefore it didn't much matter what people were thinking. With the help of those inner pictures, people could see into the spiritual world and thus whatever Araman might have tried to teach them about their relationship to the animals would not have made any difference in their life. It is really only in our fifth post-Atlantean epoch, which began in the 15th century, that thinking has become powerful. We could say it is mighty in its powerlessness. Unlike in previous times, since the 15th century, thinking has become able to lead the consciousness soul into the spiritual realm. And at the same it also gained the power to prevent that soul from entering the spiritual world. In contrast to earlier eras, in our time, theories and sciences are consciously trying to rob us of our divinity and of our experience of the divine. <clears throat> this has not been possible prior to the age of the consciousness soul, and that is why the Aramonic spirits are trying especially hard now to spread teachings that blot out our awareness of our divine origin. There we go. Self-explanatory. Rudolf Steiner was an astrologist, a biodynamic farmer. I think he founded that movement, an anthroposophist. He founded that philosophy as well, merging spirituality with materialism. He was a seer and a spiritual adept. And I think he was able to get out of body. He had clairvoyance. He was just an overall genius and gift to mankind. And he's got a lot of the audio lectures that were recorded Obviously, the guy speaking at the moment is um, not Rudolf Steiner himself. Rudolf Steiner was an Austrian, and he existed in the early parts of the 20th century. So he knew all these things that we're talking about that was to come based on him having spiritual foresight and being able to see into the causal realms of what brings about the effects and what actually is happening here on planet Earth, which is all very empowering knowledge. So I, I recommend, you know, he's got a YouTube channel, um, Rudolf Steiner Press. Um, there's loads of great um, audio lecture series on there that are obviously um, translated from Austrian into, into English and then read out by um, that gentleman there that you heard. So I, I encourage you just to, you know, the artificial matrix of mind control, except from word magic, pause this and read through this in your own time, just to save time in this presentation. Uh, it just helps to get you to understand, understand, understand um, the nature of reality that we're in and how you know we are all creators of our own reality, which is why it's so important to get rid of these mind viruses that have been inserted in by these aromantic forces and governments to take us away from our true power and divinity, being able to exercise our free will and to bring about heaven on earth and our version of reality and the timeline that we want to experience. And so if we collectively get together, like I said, and all become sovereign and educated and know about these things and become learned in how to decode all the hidden symbolism, and not get sucked into contract in a way our, our free will, um, we, we can be very, very powerful and we can actually rise above, like I said, and transcend all these limitations that they put in place, which are probably, you know, like I said, necessary. It's probably a necessary evil for us to grow 
and it's that resistance isn't it like electricity needs resistance it's always that yin and yang aspect that resistance and magnetism in order to you know provide contrast and polarity in order to experience something um, it doesn't mean that there's separation like male and female they're not poles apart they're not opposites because in every female there's elements of the male like testosterone and things but it's just the, the measure of those hormones and and what makes up a female and likewise a male there's everything that constitutes a female in the male but it's just and that's perfectly symbolized in the yin and yang symbol which is probably the most powerful symbol the planet has ever you know has ever come to grace this planet because you got again on the feminine side the yang side there's the feminine aspect with the dot and on the yang on the yin side there's the masculine aspect with the dot and so like i said everything's been put out of balance at the moment with this insane incessant roll out of technology which is just the the left brained toxic masculine masculinity that is you know sweeping in from these aromatic forces who are detached from source and have to rely on technology who believe they can exist without technology it's probably linked to this black guru as well in order to survive and kind of play god and be this omnipresent entity that just goes about the universe consuming organic matter because it needs energy, it needs us, and we're the perfect batteries in order to fuel the system. So just like every corporation, which otherwise, you know, dead corpse in this system that we support, even the governments, because the governments are just made up in the minds of men and women. It's not one not one person is the government. It's all a concept of the mind. In order to feed these things, we must give our energy away to it, our thought force energy. And these, these thought forms create egregores, which take on their own kind of manifesto and consciousness almost that the agents within that organization help to provide the battery and the fuel and the energy to in order to survive but ultimately the biggest currency um is is our money is our sweat equity our, our money represents our sweat equity you know i know this is all fiat debt-based currency notes which are backed by nothing but it is it's actually backed by our sweat equity and this is what's been exploited so this is why it's so important to learn the things that i teach in my course so this doesn't get exploited and, and sapped from you unlawfully and fraudulently and so then you can also use this money to help feed living organisms such as you know these these men and women and businesses that are supporting nature and supporting one another like myself you know providing this information if you support me it's great and I can maintain and keep doing my research and keep doing the things I'm doing in order to get the message out there like I've done with you know taking Bibi Bacchus's course Mark Christopher's course supported you know bought loads of books to support loads of other people's works who are helping to share this knowledge because i'm giving them my energy i'm and that's what's needed for them in order to provide their platforms to keep um educating new people that are coming in um who are just coming into awareness of these things so it's like a constant conveyor belt of people waking up you know you're at this point now where you're watching this and you probably think you know you're probably ready to make that next step um but there's so many people that you know maybe a year from now they'll come in and they'll be ready to make that first step and then you'll be fully graduated as it were and well-learned in these things and could actually end up becoming a teacher to teach these things and the things you found out um, through exercising the tools that you learn on the course. So yeah, pause this, have a read. And then this is the second slide. This is all taken out of Pao Chang's book, which I thought was, was really good to go over. And then this is the final one. And so just to quickly wrap this up before going into having a sneak peek on the inside of my course and what it is I have to offer, I recommend going over to supersoldierstalk.com. Like I said, um, my knowledge, I've been catapulted into coming to the awareness of, you know, pretty much every possibility of what's going on with planet Earth at the moment. Um, and with all the information, the wonderful information that's being released in this apocalypse, which is otherwise Greek for, you know, the, the great unveiling, the release of information, which which we're in, which is otherwise, you know, otherwise the great revelation. Truth is everywhere. Uh, but it's just, you know, having that that spiritual eye and gut intuition to discern fact from fiction, uh, which is so very important because there's a lot of misinformation out there, which is deliberately done by the disciparati, uh, which are these fallen angels, these institutions, these, you know, Freemasons and bloodlines to convolute the truth and keep people penned into the proper you know profiteer and propaganda um discourse that they roll out on the media which is otherwise you know the greek goddess of illusion <laughs> where they cast spells on their networks which you know spell casting is otherwise you know broad which they broadcast through their tv shows which are called programs programming the minds of the masses um, through beta waves um, which slip right into the subliminal subconscious minds and just yeah, look at everyone everyone's running off like state programs commercial subconscious scripts 
unable to think for themselves and it's sad but everyone has an opportunity to wake up like I did I was serving a pretty satanic subconscious script self abusing myself binge drinking every weekend smoking um, not eating really necessarily the right foods and not supporting the right business practices but I got woken up I had a crown chakra awake and I was seeking the truth it was, it's always been there in my life tapping away and it's either going to come as a light little knock on the door or a sledgehammer through your window <laughs> you know what I mean so um, for each and every one of us, it, it you know it's it's either going to be one extreme or the other. But for those who don't even pay attention to the brick through the window, um, well then they got Elon Musk and um, the Internet of Things to suck their consciousness soul into the next web of artificial harvesting matrix. Um, so yeah, you know pay attention. Your soul could be at stake. So. Secret space program, super soldiers, DNA, genetics and technology, most valuable things, trading in the universe. This is another thing just going on about what he's posted on his website, which I recommend going to check out. And on YouTube, even though he's now on Rumble, a lot of his content got wiped out. Um, this is maybe something that will help you prepare for the truth. Um, because the truth is stranger than fiction. If you understand, understand, understand some of the technologies these ET races have and what's been going on in the secret space programs, it's mind boggling. I mean, I can even sit down and make this up. It's incredible. I find it really cool, though, to be honest. And I may have been involved, but this is something I need to explore myself, maybe do some regression work and whatnot. But I have had a healing session done, and the woman said, my, my energy is not human, which is quite interesting. I told her about my stories, and highly synchronistic. And obviously, yeah, you know, talking about star seeds and this movement. And she believed I was sent here by the Galactic Federation of Light, which is quite interesting. Uh, but again, like I said, I can't confirm that. It, what matters is I'm here now in a human body, wanted to get this message out here. Um, and that's something I can ex explore personally myself. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of, lot of us light workers here at the moment. There's a lot of star seeds, but there's also a lot of hell seeds. Um, so like I said, it's like re reaching this boiling point, this bottleneck of all the timelines. Um, and we've we got to work together and don't be afraid and stand up for our rights. And especially against these these automatons and the agents of the system, our, our fallen brothers and sisters, unfortunately, have done the consciousness of our man, Satan, Sauron in Lord of the Rings. You know, that he used to be a good elf, then he fell, just like Saturn used to be a son, then it got bound by the spellbinding of the rings um, to broadcast the illusion of time and decay and death. Um, so, yeah, just just pay attention. We, we, we have all the power. So we've got... You know, Gene, Isis, Moon, Dark Side, of, there's a lot of bases from alien races. Moon, a giant quantum computer helping to project false matrix. Um, you've got, obviously, when it says Satan is the prince of this world, they believe uh, the prince is otherwise a higher caste of the Draco command structure. And so he kind of oversees this planetary systems, which isn't just Earth, but it'd probably be the solar system and a few other systems. And so the Cabal the Illuminati, these bloodlines that are seeded by these fallen angels, which are, you know, these Draco reptilian um, entities. Otherwise, are here as the flesh and blood counterparts to work with the spirits, the satanic spirits that the reptilians, and these Dracos also work with in order to help control the masses for their harvesting of energy and resources and genetic implement um, experimentation um, and extraction of DNA because the most valuable commodity in the universe is actually genetics, DNA and technology. They don't care about money. The money is just used under this fiat debt-based system to um, administer control. Um, so these, these planets, this planet's not the only one that they, they're claiming that is under this, this current system. Like it says in Jupiter Ascending, you know, your planet is one of many thousands that, you know, are set up like this in order to harvest energy from us. Um, and so, you know, what's going on in terms of Trump Maybe the Galactic, you know, Galactic Federation like working with him and the, the benevolent ETs, etc., and all the forces of good trying to help curate a positive timeline for humanity and get in disclosure and all these things. Um, it's just a mess. It seems like there's a mess. As much as there is a mess down here on Earth, well, the exopolitics up there, it seems to be just as bad um, and as gnarly. But at least there are, at least there's progression here. You know, the truth is coming out and at the end of the day, it's up to us to take action. But the reason why things haven't happened maybe as quick as people were hoping is because, well, if we overthrow the cabal down here on Earth, which is what Johan Fritz says, and he's got a great channel called Quantum Red Pill Cafe, which I highly recommend watching on YouTube. Well, as soon as we've ousted the cabal, the cabal are going to phone back up to the command structure, the prince, and the prince is going to 
find out and he's going to end up, you know, calling into um, the higher structure above him, the command structure to basically bring in Armada to reassert control. And so certain things, assets and technologies and defences need to be in place so we can survive an attack by these regressive entities um, so we can obviously safeguard our new kind of covenant, as it were, coming into the age of Aquarius of the wealth being returned to the people and everyone coming back under, you know, the correct constitution of the common law, the natural law, where everyone's treated equally, equity rules. Um, if we get rid of this, this satanic, um, using everyone as debt slaves under the maritime amity jurisdiction. So yeah, I've got the, there's a, I'm going to refer you on to a brilliant documentary, which introduces you to this. If you're not really up to speed, which I highly recommend, like I said, it's always best to, introduce this into your psyche so you can prepare yourself for what is about to come um given everything that's been said in this presentation this is on rumble and you've got the title of this so you can pause and you can go and search this you better find this on google and in rumble and this is from james rink um, who is a self-proclaimed super soldier and a lot of these so-called super soldiers have woken up over the last 20 years again as these new energies are coming in from the cosmos to help us out in order to get rid of these regressives so humanity can progress um, in their soul evolution for those who are ready anyway, um, who are willing to take responsibility for themselves. Um, so the things they've been doing to these people is horrific and you know they're not getting any recognition from the government who are just using them as cattle to go off and perpetuate wars um, and clone, to animate clone bodies through like MK Ultra mind control programs where their consciousness is split and the things that go on are just mind-boggling. But like I said, truth is stranger than fiction. And a lot of this has actually been released in the TV, you know, TV shows and movies, such as Captain America was the first generation of super soldiers that they've been experimenting with. And they're up to, I think, now the 11th or 12th generation where these these beings um, can do... They'll be a, basically recognised as demigods, like in Marvel, the things that they can do, um, otherwise godly. Um, and this is what's used to perpetuate empires and you know taking over planets in other systems around the galaxy and this universe so yeah it's deep but it's worth introducing into your psyche to become aware of these things and i hope you connect more dots like i said going forward in terms of what they're kind of putting out in terms of you know the discourse in the mainstream media painfully drip feeding to the masses the the kind of watered down version of the disclosure that they want to give, but we already live in a post-disclosure world. All the information is out there. Pierce Bax's work, Stephen Greer, David Wilcock, Cosmic Agency on Gaia TV, James Rink, SuperSoldierTalk.com, Quantum Red Pill Cafe. All these people coming out are starting to remember their involvement in the secret space programs, which is this you know break, breakaway civilization that the Nazis basically um, pioneered back in the 30s and 40s and joined contract the Dracos as a, a vassal state um in order to you know not be a slave a surf state basically they thought well just let's join them rather than you know be a slave to them let's just join them uh, so we get some privileges and benefits and so yeah it's, it's just been an absolute mess ever since then with abductions and you know all these experimentations but this is all changing from what i've heard so yeah invite you to go and check this out in your own time so yeah, 3D to 5D Ascension, just to wrap things up, due to this upgrade within a holographic system, the aromatic forces, astral ETs and flesh and blood minions are hammered to counter this by rolling out 5G and administering the vax to ensure you do not wake up or ascend organically where your dormant, dormant DNA will heal and reactivate, bringing back our innate normal abilities like telepathy, telekinesis, teleportation, clairvoyance, and just being aware, you know, just being aware of your divinity yourself so you can bring about more harmonious and happy lifestyle for yourself and your family and your friends. The fractal virus that is now slowly trying to take over the earth and reprogram its organic matter into their saturnic reality system, GMO, gene editing, transhumanism, like we said before, this toxic masculinity, left-brained, dominant scientist version, like what Elon Musk is wanting to roll out, with, you know, Cyberlink and all this kind of stuff, Neuralink, whatever it's called. I've experienced firsthand this organic ascension in my own consciousness since my crown chakra awakening. The amount of information experiences I've come into is astronomical, but all very necessary. I've been met with a lot of resistance in order to raise my awareness to this point, and with some of the things I've witnessed firsthand and had to go through, it only verifies to me that there really is an evil agenda afoot. 
And make no mistake, these entities are not to be messed with. Another timeline, it could have easily lost the battle and died or become mentally ill, such as their desperation remains of control of this timeline. However, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And free will must always be respected. And it's too late. Information is out here now. It's going to spread like an antivirus software, like any antibody within a sick body, in order to heal. And that's what Mother Earth needs right now. It's what humanity needs right now. And we can only do it together by getting educated in these things. So, you know, withdraw your consent, claim back your sovereignty and don't be afraid. Fear is the currency of control. I've claimed back my own sovereignty within this legal system. I've witnessed firsthand. This also applies in the high densities and astral forms of my being, which is respected by all entities. They know not to violate free will or else they will be punished sorely, which is why they work tirelessly, tension and consent. But you must stand up and say no and assert your God-given rights. Otherwise, they will walk all over you. If you do not know your rights, you effectively have none. Even rituals like Christmas, baptisms, watching TV shows and films can suck you into contract if you do not consciously rescind them to lack, for lack of full disclosure, amongst other things. Reading Power Chain's book, Word Magic, The Powers and the Court Definitions of Words, will be a great place to start in terms of raising your awareness of all the hidden tricks and traps with the birth certificate fraud, legal contracts, baptisms, Christmas rituals, news and more. By becoming aware, you start the process of recognising all the occult symbols and messages they use so you can implicitly within your own mind, and I'll explicitly outwardly say that you do not consent so you can decode what's happening in the world. I also recommend, as this is a very serious topic, as your soul evolution is at stake, that you really learn all the tricks and traps that are within this system that is designed to give away your free will and claim back your crown sovereignty as a child of God before it's too late. I've created a course where I share all the amazing things I have found in order to free yourself from this system of control and slavery. It's so very liberating when you come into your sovereignty and realisation of how powerful you are stripping away the many lifetimes of epigenetic programming as slaves to finally be born again quite literally and take back control of your mind, body and soul and take back your crown in this corona period. So I share all the solutions to navigate this matrix without being sucked into contracting your sweat equity and soul away and teach you how to become your very own sovereign and get to where I am today in a state of complete control and power over my papers, mind, body, health, soul and life. And let me tell you, it's been a wonderful journey. And so this is my goal now is to try and educate as many of you to get to where I am today, where I'm in full control of my two-dimensional paper contracts, where the four corners are, which is linked to the four corners of this earth, which is where we reserve all our right angles. You see the link there with the, the play on words. Well, that right is a right angle. A right angle governs the document, which is square in the circle, which otherwise both, if you add up the angles, equals 360 degrees. So you're completely protected. And this goes back to, you know, casting spells. 360, it binds something. So when you write down your terms and conditions on your paper documents and you understand all the procedures, all the customs, how to register the secrets of the postal road mechanics, this, that, and the other, and how to set up your own court of office, like I've done, um, you, you literally reserve all your rights. And so you keep a record of that. And that must be respected, and it is, within the system and God and the whole universe, like I said, because everything that's recorded, everything we do. And even when we man and woman's records is more superior than the state's. And so even with, you know, having this power, which I teach in the course, creating your own seals, setting up your own court of office, you can register your own IDs, and you can start being this person, this sovereign entity that you're going to be birthed into during this corona period where you've claimed back your crown and rescinded all these contracts that otherwise wrongfully having you down as dead and lost at sea but putting you in a place of you know secure party creditor and principal to that agent which is your fictional self which can be used in order to conduct commerce within the system but you never joined it to so you, you you sever that connection and you define your relationship for you never to be joined it or an accommodation party to that entity and having such things as this your id um on your person which i have a commercial id and also a personal ID under your mother's maiden name which is completely stripped and taken away from the, the father's estate which is set up under the SETI Kuvi Act which is otherwise this bankrupt um, deceased estate basically your corporation your corporate self um, you, you've got full an, an, an anonymity as it were as as a sovereign child of God under your mother's maiden name and that's, that's again what we need to come back under is bring back that divine feminine like I said before everything's been patriarchal and left brains, toxic masculine. And so we must come back to the mother. The mother is the creator of all things. We all come from the womb. Um, but they otherwise, <laughs> as soon as we come from the womb, they, they bury us in an artificial tomb, which is only, only exists on two-dimensional bits of paper. So just to go over to the website, so once you 
sign up to the website, if we go to the homepage here, which you'll see, and you click enroll today, you can get a 10% discount by entering freedom today, which should show up. So if I just enter that in, 10% off freedom today, it'll come to, you know, 675 pounds, um, which is amazingly cheap, you know, for the value content that's within. And considering I've spent over three and a half grand on courses with the UCC one, and then Mark Christopher's course with the quantum grammar, and then, you know, the two years of research and all the, <laughs> all the money I've spent on postings in order to, you know, send and receive to these, these institutions to put this all into practice and see what works and what doesn't basically, um, throw a load of mud, mud to the walls it were, and saw what stick, you know, found out what stuck basically. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's amazing value, um, to be honest. And I did initially put it on for a bit more, um, but I don't really need the money. It's just, I know the psychology of investing in something. And if you give something for free to someone, there's, then there's no investment. Um, and so it's something, you know, price such as that should invite everyone. It should be affordable by anyone. Like I said, when I first came into the realization of this kind of stuff, I was in debt. And I actually took out a loan in order to do the UCC one course and then another loan to do Mark Christopher's course. And then I actually came into the knowledge of being able to discharge all of my debt lawfully, which was brilliant, which I, I share within the course. So yeah, once you sign up, you get given a private login detail. You come into the main hub here, which is the Sovereignty Masterclass, and you'll be brought to the dashboard, which basically just outlines, you know, um, some useful resources and where you can find all the modules, which I'll go over now. And obviously here's the certificate with the identity, which is so very powerful that you'll be able to create once you go through all the steps of generating your own seal, um, setting up your own live life claim, getting that number, do the UCC one filing as well. And so we could put all this on your ID, which I can generate for you if you so wish, if you don't have the resources or um, so-called knowledge, I'll just move myself down here so you can see things a bit clearer. So yeah, if you haven't got the knowledge or the resources and graphics skills to do the these things. Um, I provide you the template, so if you wish you can, without any cost, but I, I obviously can do this for you and generate for you. And obviously we've got the QR code um, down the bottom here that you can see, and these are the seals um, which you'll have generated. So once all these things are set up, which this course will walk you through, um, these are so very powerful to have, like I said, on your person. These have been used in passport, um, sorry, these have been used in the airports to successfully get all the agents in the matrix to bugger off and leave you alone so you're not imposing, not being imposed upon by these strict medical apartheid rules and regulations. And so I go through all this and break down, you know, all the rights that are afforded to us under international law and how we can become our own sovereign state sent as and acting as a diplomat and consul general of our own sending state, which is otherwise your surname, which is your deceased estate. And because all these countries and states only exist on two dimensional bits of paper like the conveyances and all the all the weights and measures and all the laws all they exist on is two dimensional bits of paper remember the four corners the ring the, the square and the circle this is why they say in boxing from the four corners of this earth to the four corners of this ring well why do they call a boxing ring why do they call a box a ring well again it's just showing you that the symbology here and the esotericness of you know all this kind of practices that are literally governing everyone's reality and so this course will make you competent and up to the level where you you completely master the two-dimensional realm of paper contracts and procedures which would then allow you to master the 3d realm of exercising this right in person when you have your papers to back you up so show us your papers if you show us your papers that's going to dictate how these agents treat you so if you show them your papers where you are all capitalized and nom de guerre, well, they're going to treat you like a ward of the state, like an employee of the bankrupt McDonald's franchise that you've been born into. So this whole process removes you from that assumption, presumption, sends in the documents to update and amend the records and notify them of your sovereign status and record and your ID and how you want to be identified as a private sovereign citizen of planet Earth, you know, coming outside of the jurisdiction of all these bankrupt borders of control, and you'll be able to go about so much more freer um, and it'd be so liberating and you'll see these things firsthand um, to such an extent that you'll be able to enforce this on your own two feet on your own standing in the living as a sovereign man or woman of God and so these and these things just help back that 
up and for you to enforce that if it ever comes into question. Like I said, I've used this with great success. Haven't worn one mask in any of the shops. I've had students who have used this successfully going through airports without needing to wear masks, without having to quarantine, because it's all about remembering who you are. This only applies, that their world of fiction only applies to dead fictional entities and they all need people to step up to play the roles of dead fictional entities in order to be subject to dead fictional laws, corporate laws, dead corpses. So I hope that, you know, it's so very powerful to get that message over to you guys to make you understand, understand, understand that. And that's what this course offers. So just to go through it briefly, you've got obviously on the side here, you'll be um, given the modules. This is a welcome and this is kind of how it's structured. So you've got the video here and then underneath you have information with um, any necessary links and stuff relating to that specific module. And we've got introduction, which is the first one going over the economic backdrop and live life claim. Then we've got how to fill out your documents. Like I said, if you go into clicking on these things, you'll be brought into where I share all the documents um, of like the live life claim and all the dealings I've had um, in person with these institutions to prove to you that these things work in terms of discharging debts and stuff like this. So we've got economic backdrop, live life claim, providing the context, what's going on, which you guys should be up to speed now, but it's good to go into a bit, little bit more depth um, to make us appreciate the solution even more. And I share other useful resources here as well. Um, also got how to fill out and organize your documents. So I go walk you through exactly what to do with the letters and the envelopes and you know the procedures surrounding this in order to get the most out of the postal road mechanics and obviously share some templates and how to act professional. So obviously when you set up your own court of office, you want to appear as being professional um, and a sovereign state like anyone would. Like if you're in the business, you'd want to appear professional. Um, and you know, so you get the utmost respect from these agents when you put them to work for us. And so second lesson, really important, quantum grammar, and language fraud, you know, going over the tricks and traps in the language, which is so necessary. Like I said, if you look at Pierce Sabak's work and study Pao Chang's book, Word Magic, the cult definitions of words, words govern our body politics, words govern everything within this reality system. And because we speak these words, we need to know that what we're speaking and what we're writing on our, on our documents are defined and can't be convoluted and turned into, like I said, um, nouns and fictions, verbs, adjectives, pronouns, etc. And this is the, the work of the, the Temple Bar, occult lawyers, lies, solicitors, prostitutes, um, and judges. And so their courts can only ever hear the fictions. They can't hear the facts. And so, you know, if you in court, you've been caught quite literally. And look at the homophone and the word there, court, court, has been catched. And if you go to court... Well, you need a you need a racket because it's racketeering that goes on there like a tennis court. You need a racket to play the game. It's all about ball games and there's all these boxes, and so you know what I mean. We'll go over all of this, and so you become educated, so you know all the tricks and traps in the court. You know all the tricks and traps that are otherwise used within the system to try and contract you in to being joined into the straw man through all these presentments, and you'll learn all the solutions to get them to bugger off. Basically, and you never have to end up in court unless you've done harm to another living individual. And that's the whole point. You'll be coming under the natural law now, which is do no harm, do not infringe on the rights, life, liberties and um, property of another individual. If they can't prove that, then they've got no lawful claim to arrest you or you know take you to court or whatever. Um, so I show you, I've rebutted summons, court summons via simple return to sender process. Um, so yeah, it's very powerful, the things on this course, um, which you'll, you'll go through systematically which will build upon itself. But the biggest, one of the biggest is the language, without a doubt. The language is the key for all of this. And so, you know, David Wynn Miller's work is just tremendous. And so I'll give you a, a kind of elementary, well, a place to start basically in order to dissect what the quantum grammar is and how to use it in order to expose the fraudulent use of language, the fictitious conveyance of language, deprivation of rights of colouring under the law, false and misleading sentences, mail frauds, and all these things um, that they otherwise bestow onto us. And so you can get them to bugger off systematically, acting honorably, um, where you don't have to protest and write into all these unproductive things. And also share, obviously, yeah, it's all a game played out on paper, so some useful articles. So you go through it systematically, you track your progress, um, and it all builds upon itself. 
And so this one is a very important one as well, you know, how to build your seals, emblems and crests and why you need one. So very important when you establish your own sovereign nation and so-called court of office, where you need a seal or flag of your nation state, your vessel as it were, in order to be recognised as such. And so these, these seals have a lot of power. Um, and I've, I've even gotten print them on T-shirts and stuff like this. So it's you kind of done and it's, it's, a, it's a really good exercise to do in order to adopt this sovereign spirit. And so the next one is Bills of Exchange Act, which is probably one of the most important modules to fully understand, overstand, understand. And I go through all the various definitions found in Black's Law Dictionary, which I have a copy of, pertaining to what's relevant to us. Like I said, could we trust what's definition of private and all these things that they otherwise show us in these acts um, in order to gain a, a better understanding as to how we can put even their statutes and acts and know what they're saying, the game, how the game is played into good use for us to find remedy, which I've done countless times um, to the point that I've actually found the quickest and easiest method once you have these things set up, like your IDs and stuff, in order to get them to bugger off. And it's so very liberating. And so I go through these firsthand and show you guys. Um, then we got obviously how to write your letters. So talking about, you know, the customs involved, how to structure your, your letters and templates and, you know, the power of the autograph, um, you know, and also going through such things as the, the difference in the legal world, the legal world of the living, the legal world of the dead, um, going through these things. I mean, you can pause this and actually have a little brief overlook of as to what um, is actually inside this, which is what's covered here. Um, and then we obviously have, you know, I share maxims of law, which are very important. I've gone through over four and a half thousand maxims of law, which I thought were, and picked out the ones that were I thought were salient in order to list down it that you can use in your documents when you send to them. Um, which is always good to reference because, you know, maxims of law, uh, basically the basis of law and precedence that was set throughout the history of lawmaking. And then, yeah, all laws consent. I'll basically show you this, uh, which is very, very true and, and some of the, the maxims of law, which are very prevalent for that also. And so in this one, I show you how to discharge debts, fines and how not to pay your taxes um, so all at the end of the day it's just not for a contract so once you have all these once you have full knowledge of the bills of exchange act you've got your seal you've got your court of office set up um and you know all the paper procedures and the tricks and traps involved with trying to make joiner to your straw man then you, you'll be fully learned in terms of how to go about discharging or setting off these um presentments and debts you might have or obligations with the state that you might have lawfully. Um, and this this is done through a conditional acceptance um, process, which backs them into a corner. Um, and then you basically instruct them to set it off against your SETI K trust um, in the end, inevitably. But I go I go through many examples of this where I've successfully actually got rid of, you know, um, an overdraft, a bank loan, and other personal loans up to the sum of around eight grand. Um, and I've even had you know a letter confirming the fact and it just goes to show the tricks they play in terms of the plausible deniability to test whether you actually truly know what you're talking about or you just copied and pasted something off the internet and so this this is otherwise going to help you reveal the nature of the beast as it were and how to navigate their ignorance and their stubbornness and basically show you that you just don't give up and keep persisting and have a record of everything that you're sending and in the end things will be set off because it's the only way the only thing they can do is set things off and what i found is they they they're like vultures and tricksters they'll try many things and tactics none more so than enforcement agencies they're a nasty bunch of people um some of some of the lowest of low individuals and in consciousness on the planet work in these enforcement agents to perpetuate this fraud onto the people but i've i teach you again in this one in particular how to deal with bailiffs who've shown up on my door and how inevitably I've got them to shut up and <laughs> the tricks they use in order to then try and get you to be drawn into a contract again by the text messages and you know answering phone calls and stuff like this. So I called their bluff and it was amazing once I had everything, all the papers set up, that they just ended up dying. It's like a parasite, you starve them. So they can only exist if you, again, pick up the phone or respond to them out of fear. <gasps> oh no, I don't want my goods stolen. Bang. They've hooked you, bitten the hook, and they've sucked you into accepting the role as the straw man again. So, yeah, very revealing. We talk about mortgages as well, um, which is linked with Bill Turner's knowledge, which is you can apply this, everything that's taught, 
with discharging this um, and also give you another option to go for a proper go through the quantum courts in order to discharge that as well um, under Mark Mark Kitchen Christopher it's quantum courts um, but you you'll be you'll be given all the necessary skills and tools in order to do this yourself if you so wish um, but just if you want a bit more reassurance you can go through the quantum courts so seven insurance he passed bonds passports and strawman account I'll show you how much your strawman account is worth how to find it on fidelity um, and show you mine and also talk about my case of post and surety bonds for founded insurance in my car and the story with that, which is quite interesting, got pulled over. Otherwise, after taking insurance out off my car, after passing the surety bond, um, when I read about these things, and I thought, why not put it into, into practice and see what happens? And obviously, I came off paying tax as well, because that, again, it's just another contract with um, the driving agency in the nation that I reside in. And so I got pulled over and what was interesting, they couldn't actually touch me based on just one bit of document I had to prove that I sent in a, a surety bond. And then long and short of it all, there was a few back and forths of letters, I had to go in, they should have halt, they couldn't do anything in the police station, so I walked away scot free. And then obviously um, they came after me a few months later to try and process the order through the courts um, to find me um, with points on my license and, and a fine. And so I just, again, sent a letter back and I'll show you all this um, saying what, what happens and I've got a surety bond, so I'm, I'm actually insured, uh, which is backed by my SETI K Trust, which is basically another way you can access your trust. Um, and I actually got a letter back of apology rescinding the points and the fine. So just goes to show this stuff does work and I have first hand evidence of showing you these things. Um, and what's important as well is obviously going over their documents they issue us, so passports and driver's license and how we can actually make joinder to these things. Um, so we're not, when we present them, if say if you, you know, going through the airport and, and stuff like that, we can still use their documents, but be recognized on the observation page as a sovereign living entity with the live life claim number and this and the stamp affixed for the proper stamp duty, acting as postmaster, um, as well as having obviously our IDs on us at all times, because it's very important and trust me, you watch, your whole reality will change. These things are so, so very powerful. So very powerful. And so this is my job to try and convince you and get you guys up to speed to see the power in these things. Because I know there's so much doubt out there, it's scary. And that's just all based off ignorance and fear. Because I, I know, because I was there before not knowing all these things. But once you come into knowing all these things, it's like what's happening in the world of fiction around us just fades away it's like it becomes so distant they don't get involved in the in the smoke and mirrors as it were of of their illusions um, which is you know designed specifically to like i said before engineer consent and get you to fear because uh, fear is the currency of control so yeah go through that make join of your documents um then we've got the certificate of identity which is going over the universal postal union orders um which is going to give us all the rights under international law to set up your sovereign estate and also the certificate of identity um, which is these these ids like i said i've got one commercial and one personal one's under your seti k trust under the father's name and the other one's under your your mother's maiden name which i like i said before um i offer a service to make these once you've gone through and obviously got your seal established ucc one done if you want that done that's optional but at least the live life claim and your seals need to be done in order to get this generated and I go over the details here that you can see um, in order to have this done which will cost a little bit of money just to get my uh, just to pay for my time and doing the graphics and the templates because it does take a bit of time and the servicing the process and obviously printing as well but like I said if you you can do this yourself if you have the means um, but it's just sometimes very convenient to just because I've got the systems in place I can get I can offer this for you another really important one module nine you know, call to action, withdraw your consent under the Data Protection Acts of whatever country you're in, which is so very important. I'll just show you and go over the act briefly and show you the importance of, well, I'll show you the letter I wrote basically into the system in order to get them to stop spying on you basically and, and meddle with your affairs and package your information off to make you know, more money off you basically. Um, so you've got, again, under that private jurisdiction and private, trust me, is such a powerful word in law and that's where we want to be is in the private domain not in the public domain in the private domain as a sovereign citizen going up going about our business privately module 10 seti k trust this is a big one um i went through all of the acts under parliament from 2020 to all the way back to like 1840 
um, looking at everything that's relating to this trust. And so I reveal all in this. And so it's, it's yeah, really, really good research, um, which otherwise proves, you know, what's happening and the things, and the, the acts and stuff that we can quote in order to, you know, send into them to have our trust revested and, and start the process um, and see whether they honor that. And obviously put in here another great presentation, which just helps emphasize the things that I've done um, by decoding the acts um, and just adding more value to the research that's already out there that will lay out the breadcrumbs for you to do the same and hopefully, you know, find some results and get them to, um, you know, give you a little bit of your wealth that they've been robbing from you. But like I said before, I, I can show you how you can access your trust via issuing bonds and via, you know, setting things off through, um, you know, these presentments that you can do return to senders and stuff like this and setting off debt, etc., which is all very powerful too. So yeah, finally, module 11, sending in your documents, um, write your declaration. So I go over, you know, putting this all into practice. And once you get everything established, and you know all these things, well, you're going to write your terms and conditions. Um, so you're going to have your de your own declaration of how you want to be, you know, seen and treated as um, within this system. And so I, I, I've sent in a package. I've sent in a lot of documents, to be honest, but I've sent in uh, a declaration that I did um, outlining exactly how I want to be identified by, by, you know, showing them the scan copies of these IDs, who I am, I've got my own records, um, what's going on, and, you know, how I'm under the natural law, etc. And so I talk about these things briefly here, which you can see, and you can pause and actually have a read through if you wish. Um, and obviously, yeah, the power of saying no, which is, you know, a beautiful scene, which you, you'll be able to see when you're on, on the inside. Then obviously bonus you see one financing statement so i show you how to do a financing statement online and when where and how to use it basically how to put that to good use um, and again like i said it's not the be all and end all but it might just you know add a bit more value in terms of um, helping to safeguard and using all these different tools now in order to you know safeguard our status um, but the, the the most powerful Thing that we do here is establishing your own sovereignty your own government holding your own records and managing your own papers and registrations um, and so yeah that's this is just supplementary basically and so finally i thought you know what we talked about before with health and what's happened on mother earth i'm current i'm i am a holistic lifestyle practitioner under the czech institute and so you know this is something that i've done on the side almost coming into awareness of that you know, I found these things so life changing that, oh my God, I need to get this out here. I need to educate people on this kind of stuff uh, with the legal world. So once you mastered the legal realm of the 2D paper contracts, well, then you can start freeing up your life a little bit and be less worried and live in that kind of state of happiness a little bit more, knowing that you've got everything under control and that focus more of your time and assets on helping to bring heaven on earth. And and this these presentations will will help you come into realization of what's going on with the commercial farming practices and things that we can do as an individual um, in order to support the earth and come into awareness of you know respecting these vessels and to the degree we're respecting our vessels means that we're actually respecting mother earth because you can only be healthy and vital if you're actually eating organic produce which goes back to the biodynamic farming principles or organic farming principles and supporting our local farmers and building a relationship with these guys so they're not using the the processes that are used in chemical farming practices that are literally destroying Mother Earth Earth's gut, which is their soil. Remember the analogy I said before, we're like a direct version of Mother Earth, the spine being our tree, the fruits of which being our brain, thoughts and words and deeds, um, and this, you know, the soil being our gut. Um, so, you know, how we treat our bodies is a direct reflection as to how the Earth's being treated. So, you know, pay attention to that and that this is going to help you bridge that relationship. Um, so I just share some of these presentations which are private confidential um you know which are part of my training uh, but so very enlightening and will help you get up to speed and help you join the movement basically of you know helping to bring heaven on earth by destroying all this fraud not supporting fraudulent practices i.e governments contracts and corporations that you know just left brains like i said toxic masculine and these these billionaire fat cats who think they can get away with keeping people sick in order to generate profit um, and line the pockets of these medical practitioners, drug cartels, stimulant companies, supplement companies, um, whilst never addressing the cause. And the cause is literally, you know, you are what you eat. 
Um, so if you're eating sick soils, sick plants, and sick animals, well, you can end up sick. So it's, it's a very simple <laughs> um, model to follow, um, which they've managed to get everyone indoctrinated by following the allopathic, just treating the symptoms by ignoring the causes because someone who's sick makes them a lot of money. Um, you can't make a lot of money from healthy people. And so just look what's going on. Obviously, you know, vaccinating healthy people is just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah, anyway, I've got a lot of things I could say on that. But just think, you know, we're made up of 100 trillion cells, 90 trillion of which are viruses, fungus, bacteria, and, path, you know, um, and parasites. What is stopping them from eating us from the inside out? And I've done so for millions and millions of years. Well, it's something called our immune systems. So our immune systems are always in constant... In order to you know, awaken and activate our immune systems, we need to have information of our environment. And this is why sanitizing everything and doing all of the things that otherwise this, this Western world has gotten us doing is taking us away from that connection again to Mother Nature, which provides us with all the remedies in order to combat um, all these so-called opportunistic organisms. And so to the degree that you're unhealthy and aren't fit, well, yeah, of course, these, these opportunistic organisms, organisms are going to be a threat. But you can only be unhealthy and unfit if you're subscribed to the Western diet and don't have knowledge of the body and what you put in and the food you eat and that you are what you eat. You know, so that's so very important. And you know, if Mother Nature is both wise and purposeful. If we survive for you know 2.8 million years ever since we branched away from chimpanzees, if you're of the belief that you know we're 2.8 percent different genetically to chimpanzees, and it takes roughly, I think, 100,000 years to change our DNA by 0.01 percent. Well, then it's taken 2.8 million years for us to branch to get this far from evolving where we had no technologies. We weren't able to pluck vaccines from trees <laughs> to support our immune systems because we were out there in nature taking on board all these parasites and pathogens that our innate immune system, vaccine generating system, was able to populate white blood cells and learn how to combat. And you might have been sick for a few days, but if you had some rest and water and some proper food, your body would now be stronger as a result of having that information and being introduced to that environment and scan the environment so you're now more able to transverse that environment with those organisms that are present. So just look at what's going on today. You know, they're injecting, they're having to inject weakened versions of these viral strains into people because they're already sick. They cannot handle the full version, the strength of a full opportunistic organism like that because people are sick in the first place. If people are sick in the first place adding more stresses to the immune system, which is already compromised due to stress and illness, due to the you know just the way people are living under this system, well then of course they're, they're going to be, you know, it's like dicing with death, which is why, you know, so many people get these vaccines to begin with, their stress response um, is already sky high. And so this is why it's a bit of a billiard, billiard ball effect, like um, striking a, a white cue ball into a rack of balls, well, every single person, you try and replicate the same dispersion of balls every time you strike that cue ball, it's impossible because everything that otherwise dictates every single person's metabolic type and biophysiological differences based on their stresses um, and everything else that constitutes their, their health and biology. These, these big pharma models and drug company models do not factor in that. They're called linear input systems. We're a dynamic system. So if you have a linear input system going into a dynamic system, well, then there's always going to be a response so because it's it's unable to basically factor in people's stress responses and stress levels, like, i.e., someone going through a divorce or, you know, someone actually having a fungal parasite infection, which is 90% of the population, then all these things suppress the immune system's ability to take on board whatever that drug is or, you know, vaccine and to try and deal with that pathogen on top of everything else it's having to deal with at the time, which is suppressed. And so that's why a lot of people actually end up having these side effects, adverse reactions. Um, and obviously otherwise, you know, everything else they're kind of rolling out with what we've just been through, um, having to deal with, it's just added stress to the body. It's, it's unnatural. Like I said, it's everything is going towards this left-brained automaton um, kind of reality they want to manifest where free will is stripped and everyone becomes part of the hive mind. So... Yeah, this, this just helps you come into awareness. And I thought it's really good to put it in there because, you know, being a sovereign is all about being an upstanding sovereign citizen, a role model. And you can only do that if you're healthy and vital and you've got energy 
and the whole systems are working and you're in you're working in symbiosis and you're living up to um, mother nature's standards and so i think that's so very important so yeah chuck that in there as well so at the end as well if you're once you're done with that you can obviously redeem a 30 minute free skype consultation with myself where i can go over any questions you do have um that this course wasn't able to answer for you if there's any specific things and i also do offer just depending on the case and what's going on my time in order to go over any particular cases that you might have or situations on top of that 30 minute allotted time um, by charge 140 pounds per half hour that's 280 pounds an hour of my time because i've got a lot of other things i'm getting on with like i said I've got my health and protection health holistic health and practitioner training and clientele that I'm dealing with. I've got other businesses on the go. Um, and so, you know, if it's serious and you need my help, if you haven't been able to work it out yourself with everything that's on offer here, um, then I'm, I'm, yeah, we, we can maybe talk about it and have a consultation. So there you go, guys. Right, back to the slideshow. Um, and this is obviously, you got this for life. Um, once you have your login details, you'll have this for life. Um, as long as people keep supporting the channel or supporting at least the costs of keeping this on the website and with the, the platform um, so people can access it. And so yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, it's really good. It tracks your progress. I'll be able to see when you're done as well. And we can get everything in, put in place for you basically so you can reclaim your crown during this corona period. So yeah, just to go over quickly, just to wrap this up, 20 solutions to free humanity. This is again taken from Pao Chang's book, just to go over again, you know, tree freedom requires great responsibility self-explanatory learn how to use words wisely that's what I go over in my course difference between legalese and you know conveying the facts and the meanings and the words which is so very interesting study trust me there will be a bit of a reboot and reprogramming that goes on in the head like i did for a few weeks it was kind of like coming into the awareness of the the poison in the language uh, but it's so very liberating so you go through these processes just be patient with yourself be aware of disharmonious and disempowered music like I said, you know, a lot of these things you become aware of with the, the messages and because words govern the body politics, we can actually manifest. People quite psychosomatic can literally, like the placebo effect, create their own illnesses and their own, and this, this goes on to even your own realities and the person who, you know, the person you are. So this is why it's very important to, you know, thoughts, words, deeds, be conscious of, you know, everything that you are otherwise letting in into your life and what you're creating through your thoughts, words and deeds. Avoid fighting the dark forces. Stop, so, you know, no need to protest or riot or go after them angrily. Just act honorably, peaceably, and things will be respected and done within the system by the agents who are all pretty much ignorant of this. Some of them obviously knowingly partaking in it. Uh, they're, you know, part of the secret societies and stuff, but they still have to respect our free will. So that's the bottom line. And we can exercise that when you learn all the, all the tools in order to do this professionally and be seen as a professional sovereign um, who's learned of all these things and, They'll be like, oh my God, okay. And it probably shocks them. Um, but they know times are changing, which is why they're having to, again, like I said, countermeasure everything that's going on. Um, so it's it's that yin and yang aspect again. They're only doing everything and acting so desperate as they are because they're, they're afraid of losing control based on everyone waking up. Stop voting for treasonous politicians. You need to get out of the artificial matrix, matrix of control. Like I said, the government's run by the shatani. Their, their sole purpose is there to set up this, dual, this illusion of dual dualism and keeping us divided and conquered collapse the system from within set up your own government manage your own papers and then whenever you need to use them obviously you know the more people that do this it will it'll, it will reduce itself to the the size necessary in order to sustain proper functions of commerce and transportation and public services for we the people um, and so they won't be supporting dead corpses and all this corporatocracy and globalism and we can we can slowly again like i said withdraw a life force from it because it can only exist if we feel it do not ignore the dark forces study god's law natural law just go over in the course like i said before we don't know your rights you effectively have none study man's law and the legal system tricks and traps stay away from all public protests arm yourself with knowledge of empower public protests you're otherwise saying that you're still given the government power to change things for you and that you will not change things in your own life by establishing these things so it's a disempowering act and it doesn't get anyone anywhere um, so this is the only solution guys is to claim back your own crown on paper um, honorably and peaceably arm yourself from knowledge of empowerment seek truth 
stop relying on external savior to save you. Huge, huge thing to take away in this presentation, like I said before. Do not rely on external savior. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Put a to get together, pull our fingers out, and learn these things. A couple of months, two or three months, painful study. I know because thinking hurts the brain, but trust me, it'll be so, so worth it once you're out the other end and become learned in these things and have more control. Um, especially with what could be rolling out with more restrictions and we'll just see how far this, this system goes, yeah? Um, before inevitably it just collapses and hopefully consumes itself. But no ignoring the signs, like I said, with everything that's gone over in this presentation, just hopefully this you know, makes you prepared for what could potentially happen and what's to come. Stop supporting wars and crimes against humanity. Spend money wisely. You know, support eco-friendly business, buy organic food, support your local biodynamic organic, organic farmers and care product makers. Claim your sovereignty and create your status. Learn how contracts work and learn your rights. Stop relying on politicians to create change. Invest in alternative energy technology. Learn to live peaceably. Write your own declaration to, to protect your natural rights. Live like small communities. Basically, everything on this course, you will learn that is outlined here is to be the change you want to see and get you there fast tracked within a couple of months um, for very little, 10% off. You know, it's a no-brainer, really. And so... You know, Corinthians 3, 16, 17, do you know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defies the, te defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are? Ask yourself which temple you are. You know, you've got to start supporting. Once you start taking back control of yourself and your life and claim back your crown, well, then you can start helping others and helping this, this world manifest heaven on earth and to bring back, you know, everything we need in order to get rid of this ridiculous insanity and psychopaths that are in government and all these institutions, um, you know, because they can't get to God. They can only get to him through you. So you are the one you've been waiting for. Time to wake up and start acting like the child of God, like I said, and you are, and claim back your crown as a sovereign. So I hope this presentation has raised your awareness as to what's happening in the world, how the dark forces invert, like inverting certain situations that otherwise are linked with our awakening and how that's designed to engineer consent and pull people into contracting away, again, the life force and soul energy, not only in this physical plane, but potentially in you know other planes of existence. There's no denying this. Um, and so you can see the tricks and traps and the rituals used with you know what's going on. The corona is the crown. It's Latin for crown. And so hopefully this will give you even more impetus to you know come back on board and take action to claim back your own crown and sovereignty during this corona period which is so very very important that we all do because if we don't and we sit on our hands and do nothing well then that's seen as consent and then this system is just going to roll out on top of you and hell would be brought on earth trust me this is what they want and it's quite clear to see if you were to assess and you had eyes and you know, two brain cells shaking hands of the, what's happening in the world around us. That this is what's going on. And so, yeah, I invite you in, become learned, join the sovereignty movement. And like I said, you got my email address on the website. If you've got any more questions, um, then don't hesitate to get in touch. But you know, be the change you want to see, and let's help shift this grid together. Because like I said before, together we rise, divided we will fall. And so it's about time we become all edu educated in these things and, you know, become learned in the things that they've otherwise kept from us for, you know, centuries and millennia in order to empower ourselves and get rid of this satanic car system of hierarchical control, which keeps us all down at the bottom, serving just, you know, a small percentage of people at the top, which, you know, is, is not mammalian at all. It's not humanitarian at all. It's archontic. It's non-human. It's heartless. So it's about time we, we bring back all the good qualities of what it is to be human. Yeah, and have this human experience and evolve together on this planet with Mother Earth and all its wonderful creations. Um, so we can look after it and be the custodians and guardians that God, you know, gave us in terms of inheriting, um, you know, what is rightfully ours. And that's not only our bodies, flesh, blood, sweat, equity and energy, but also Mother Earth and the things that she has gifted to us so we can all share equally. Not own, but share equally. I mean, the native Indians, you know, 
have the best philosophy towards ownership and control. Um, like I said, it, it all exists on two-dimensional bits of paper. You can't... <laughs> all these borders and contracts, treaties, trusts, etc. only exist in the two-dimensional fictional realm of paper contracts and procedures before which all the native peoples knew that we're just here sharing Mother Earth. Mother Earth can't be owned. But it can only be owned if you're sucked into playing this fictitious role on paper. So yeah, guys, I hope that's helped raise your awareness. And um, feel free to you know share this to other people so they can maybe view it and become more aware and enlightened as it were into these things. Um, until then, obviously, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for your support. If you do sign on, um, the more of us that come into this kind of knowledge and awareness and claim back our sovereignty, um, the less we feed parasites and the sooner we can bring heaven on earth. So yeah, wholeness, balance, vibrations, love, chi, and enlightenment. And as always, stay safe out there and stay sovereign. I look forward to connecting in the future if you partake in the course. Till then, ciao, amigos. <laughs>